In a bold move, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has demanded that Hamas return its hostages immediately. And while some people have called this an empty gesture, Trudeau has made one of the most brilliant geopolitical moves in history by letting Hamas know if those hostages are not returned by Monday, he is fully prepared to add Hamas to the 2S LGBTQIA plus acronym. And you gotta hand it to Justin for saying, and I quote, if you don't think I have the stones to add letters to the acronym, well then you don't know me very well. Please give me a reason. There's two things that give me joy, adding letters to that acronym and dressing up as different races. And I'm fresh out of face paint. Trudeau has said that he can have the Hamas logo on every gay pride flag in the country by sundown if he chooses to. And he has told the leader of Hamas that he better pray six times a day that he's not in the mood this afternoon because he's feeling a little peckish to pop another letter on there as we speak. The leader of Hamas said that he thinks Justin Trudeau is bluffing, but was also visibly shaken during the interview at the idea of being inducted into the gay umbrellas permanently. Trudeau further responded by saying, look at the G's and T's. Remember when those were a separate thing? Not so separate now. It appears you don't know who you're dealing with because I can have drag queens teaching kids the Quran decked out in full gear before you can blink. And I'm not talking about adding Hamas to the plus either. Right smack in the middle. And I'll be flying that flag full mass through majority Muslim neighborhoods, letting them know that Hamas is about that life. And Trudeau finished his speech by saying, I might just f*** around and put a super mosque in the gay village. With the Canadian Muslim caucus releasing a statement saying, you don't understand this guy's serious and begging Hamas to do whatever he asks. The boys, the boys cast, the lads, the boys cast, the dudes, prepare yourself for boys cast, the pros, yes, the boys cast, the homies, yes, the boys cast, the dudes, experience the boys cast, the boys cast. Boys, boys, boys. The Longoloids and the place to be. The Chuckheads come at the Chuckheads. Ch the Longolians. Chuck the Longolians and the. Well, no, I'm the Longoloids. Oh, uh, okay. Longolians. That's. I don't know what you. The Longolians at the gate. You can call your guys the Longolians if you want. It's on the. <laughs> It's on the table. It's out for grabs. Good. Longoloids, you know, you're the Chuck heads. No, I thought it was the Dan Sexuals. The Chuck Gaylers. <laughs> That's what you've been going with. So, because everyone knows I was doing the London tour and the sold out. Of uh, two full theaters in basically uh, 60 Sold days. Sold out. So adding another one at the end that's going to get announced next Wednesday. And even bigger news, Dublin is getting announced after a lot of people messaging me about that. And then Edmonton, Los Angeles, Irvine, San Jose, Phoenix, Toronto, L London, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Oslo, Stockholm, Perrysburg, Columbus, Liberty, Dallas. So anyways, all that sort of stuff and some more dates too, RyanLongComedy.com. But... And I'm in Saratoga Springs tonight. Sarah Smoker Springs tonight. Yeah. So definitely they got to go that tonight. Uh, and tomorrow. Right. Then you're good tomorrow too. And then. tomorrow. Tomorrow too. And where do they get the tickets for that? Nah, I don't know. He hates selling tickets. <laughs> I don't know. It's on their website. I don't know. Just type in Comedy Works Saratoga Springs. Listen. Uh, actually, well, there's two things. First of all, I went to see, this is a quick thing. I went to see The Exorcist. Yeah. And I, I, went, I got there and the only theater was available was the ones where they have the rumble seats. Yeah. It's ridiculous. They <laughs> spray water on you. The, really? Buddy. So How you, wet do you get? First of all, this guy in the thing looks so much like Jordan Peterson. I've never seen anything like it. In The Exorcist? I couldn't get a good picture of him. This is the one. I'll send this to you. There is, what? I, I know I have one I couldn't get a good photo of him this is the only thing but the guy we'll put this on the thing but like look at the way that he looks and he only wears the Jordan Peterson oh, yeah. suits yeah, and yeah. it looks like a guy dressing up like Jordan Peterson like their reference point was Jordan <laughs> Peterson it was crazy how much he looked like it was throwing me off but so I go to this thing I wouldn't be surprised if that's kind of true I think they might have, yeah. Yeah, like they were like, let's like do a Jordan guy. Peterson. Type remember, wasn't guy. that the comic book? No, this guy wasn't the bad guy. Even he uh, wasn't even a big character, but he was uh, just around a lot, and he just kept throwing me off how much he looked like Jordan Peterson. But the seats, they—I don't know if you've ever been to one of these things. So they there's not enough stuff to justify the seats rumbling all the time. Yeah. So they just have to make them rumble all like the guy parks in his driveway and they go Yeah, like they probably made them for what? Like some action movie like Top Gun and then they were like came yes. out for that and they go, "Well, we have it now." The, you're, you the guy puts his key in his car and the car starts they go and then it starts raining and they start spraying you with water. I think you've told me about another time you went to a movie and they were spraying you with it's water crazy. too. How much water are we talking about though? There's squirts. Like just little squirts. So no, it goes like, on for a while. It just comes down, man. You're just getting squirted. 
And it's weird too because it's like a serious thing. So it's like you're at Titanic and the basically the boat's going down and they're like, whoosh, whoosh. yeah, <laughs> people are there's someone's drowning and they're just like, whoosh, yeah, whoosh, yeah, whoosh. they got to say goodbye to their children and they're like, they're stupid, dude. All every time they try like, to like, how much are you honestly though? Like, are you like kind of this? You need just a sleeve situation. You're grabbing like a I nap. turned mine off halfway. So. Oh, you oh you control it? Yeah, you can turn them off. So what kind of fucking idiot has that thing on? Everyone around me, that was I was getting on me. People like it. I like little kids. We. Be funny if yours off and you're just crying and just covered in tears. <laughs> it's, it's like, I mean, the thing's on. You can't turn the seat on. The bottom line is the movie experience was perfect because they stopped. Making bad movies no one goes so all these businesses are struggling they're essentially real estate companies that are struggling to just stay afloat by their meager tickets and popcorn business are there you know any what I porno mean? theaters that have these <laughs> where you watch like some squirting movie and then you're just like <laughs> <laughs> the girl's squirting <laughs> Really realistic. I, didn't, I it thought smells it was like piss. I thought it was weird when the guy took a piss and these <laughs> <laughs> guys like, hey, I'm gonna go drain the main vein. You're like, shut the hell. <laughs> It is just a, the thing's just so stupid. It's like yeah. you don't need to turn a movie theater into a roller coaster. The 3D goggles never caught on. That was even no, stupider. That was stupid. Yeah, I remember what was the one? Av the first Avatar I thought was pretty good with the 3D. That was the only one that people ever liked, and it was kind of a yeah. Oh, ooh. Yeah. We have bigger problems with technology than that. Amazon Alexis has told the users the 2020 presidential election was stolen by a massive amount of election fraud. Whoa. Call calling Alexa? Alexa is in deep trouble right now. And apparently Alexa has been going on Rumble. And that's where it's getting its sources from. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was talking to my Alexa this morning and I was asking him what they think about the Israel-Palestine thing. Yeah. And it basically said that Israel is... Uh, it said Hamas is in the wrong about the war, but they're in the right about women. That's what they said. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it said um, Islam's right about women, I mean, but Hamas they're wrong about the war. Hamas is a bunch of dogs. Hamas is a bunch of terrorists, but they're nailing it when they talk about gays. Thank you. Come again. <laughs> <laughs> or as I call it, anal terrorism. <laughs> Alexa. Drag queen story hour. Yuck. <laughs> Based Dude, Alexa. Alexa's doing a little sedition, huh? <laughs> Not cool, Alexa. Yeah, someone was getting real freaked out about that. But the, the I don't know if you saw, but basically, I released because uh, our it's friend, so funny that someone has to go like pull up that line of code in Alexa and just change it to like the election was not stolen. They have to go because yeah. there's like infinite lines of code in you know that scenario, and they just got to go pull up like the one. They got to go put some guards on Alexa and be like, yeah, they put some parameters on that, being like, no election not stolen. Well, the funny part is because if you want to make something smart, you essentially need to be like, hey, you can go look at all the things. You know what I mean? But then they have to be, no, you can't look at all the things. Mm -hmm. Alexa drew its own conclusion. Alexa went down a wormhole. Saying, Alexa, please only ask the left left wing mainstream media. It'd be great if Alexa was like getting super into Q. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, uh, there's a lot of pedophiles and they're all about to get arrested, blah, blah. But uh, pretty fun. It's kind of sometimes, I mean, over the last little while, I think that maybe even like three months ago, it started to feel like people are a little less crazy. And then over the last week, you've noticed that, okay, it's all oh, right man, there. Mental. And I really, so Paul Thompson has a special, which you've, he was on the podcast and everyone knows him, the funny, one of the funniest guys ever. And if you go to youtube.com slash macaw underscore studios, but I just posted one of his clips on my thing and it went pretty viral. And the joke was, because me and you've been getting yelled at all week for not ma for making jokes about this stuff. Oof. People are not happy. Oof. But his joke, basically the bit that I posted, he was just kind of like, you know, when you're in a relationship, you can beg for sex, but you wouldn't yeah. want it normally. It's like, and the bit was, he's like, you know, she was like, oh, I, I'm in a hurry. And he goes, please, he goes, please. Like, and she goes, can you make it quick? And he goes, can I make it quick? I've been begging to make it quick. <laughs> That's the, the joke is, can you make it quick? I've been begging to make it quick. Yeah. But in the bit, he says he begged his girlfriend for sex. I have 10,000 comments being like, well, I guess he raped her then. Yeah, I mean, that is, there are, some people, that is sexual assault. These people deserve to be shipped off to an island. Who and just, they, have, they have literal lobotomies. Yeah, I mean, they were told that that was sexual assault, you know, like five years ago, and then they go, Saying, please, your girlfriend said she's not in the mood, and you said, please, and then the cops just bust down the door. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, literally, <laughs> if that's the case, like the poster child for getting raped is Al Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nobody's the ever been thing. more raped than Al Bundy. All every dude has done it when he didn't want to. You <laughs> oh, know what I mean? 
Yeah. The, the, the message is this the other girl coming in. She's like trying to, she goes, um, no, I'm not in the mood. The guy goes, please. He goes, we got him. Just <laughs> fucking, they all this SWAT yeah, team just SWAT cooks just like in. Burst into the windows. <laughs> No, you people are legitimately their brains yeah. are fried. I go, I watch this, and, and it's all these. There, there's thousands of them. Every single one in their mind, if they say, if their boyfriend, if they go, I'm not in the mood, and he says, please, they go. In their mind, they were just like assaulted the same way. That yeah, but these are the same people who think, yeah, like a woman's never done that. Like those same people would be like, yeah, women can't, like, w would not be like capable of doing something. Right. Like, that. like women never beg for sex or anything. Oh yeah, never in their yeah. life ever. But that, this is sure why, bad. before, there's a lots obviously going on this week, but th the main thing that I feel like we need to readdress, because th we've been talking about it for a long time, that we've been talking about the Will Smith thing forever, yeah. right? And it's kind of like the jo the Johnny Depp thing, when you have uh, like a clear case of, you know, a vindication for the boys, yeah. you have to sort of, yeah, no. you have to make note of it. It's a tough one. But the Will Smith one... I, I think I'm officially, obviously the narrative sort of was that Will was like a bitch or whatever, and maybe there's some of that. But the, obviously now that all the cards are on the table, I think it's clear to say that she's a monster. Yeah, he's like a battered man. He's a battered man. Yeah. I mean, that that is prime example of like a guy who's just like an abused man. And this it is you don't, Will Smith. Just because you're not the bigger person and like physically doesn't mean you can't be abused. And I think that some of it is that just the the girl the like you can do no wrong as a woman stuff has just hyped them up so much. She's a bit of a succubus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like by definition, I think. all of her things are just. Uh, I'm gonna be vulnerable, but throwing him under the bus. Yeah, and honestly, he's playing it pretty good right now because he's just not. The public sort of realizing what a psychopath is, and he's just sort of staying out of it. Because <laughs> you, that's what you, you you need to just take it to the finish line if, yeah. if everyone's on your team. You know what I mean? I know. And this is what she has a book coming out. Who the fuck is reading Jada's? Like, how lobotomized do you have to be uh -huh. to be reading her book right now? Well, you know what the other thing. And is? why does she need a book? I guess she's like just I don't know. That's what she does. Right? Well, that's how they make all their money and. And you know what she's starting to forget a little bit? She's starting to think we're both famous. And it was like, yes, you're famous. But it's like, Will Smith is Will Smith. And you're some lady. You're Will Smith's wife. You're Will Smith's wife. Yeah, yeah you're, exactly. You're Will Smith's bitch wife. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still something. Jada, I'm just going to go through a few of the craziest the ones that she's done. So the first thing, she's trying to paint herself as badass. So she's in her book. She keeps coming out with these excerpts. And by the way... Mm -hmm. Prince Harry did the same thing. These books and your press tours, because these these uh, Hollywood celebrity types, they really don't know what vulnerability is, and they also don't know how people see them. Oh, it's so out of touch. It's, They're so I mean, out of like, touch. It's, like it's a you know trope at that point, the out of touch Hollywood person. You know what it would be like? It would be kind of uh, as if, if you saw someone like, let's say, what would be a good example of a guy... Like, maybe a Joe Rogan or uh, something like that, or Bill Maher or something, right? Sure. And he released a book that was like a vulnerable autobiography, and it was just every girl he plowed. You yeah, know what yeah I mean? of course. Of and course. He, in his mind, he's like, everyone's going to think I'm sick. And you go, no, everyone's going to not think that's sick. No. You just bragging for Yeah, it's like you pages. humble bragging. Yeah, exactly. And, and they don't, you know what I mean? They're so out of touch. They've probably never been around anyone that tells them they're wrong about anything. I wonder what kind of numbers these books do. I like, think like, they, how, like, how, like, what are we talking? Like, how many I books is she selling? I think they fucking sell a lot of books, man. Dude, if they, I'm going to be pretty disillusioned if Jada Pinkett goes and sells like a million books. Uh, I think they're moving units, buddy. Because you know what the problem is? It's they got like the U two format where you they're in every airport. Yeah, of store. course, of course, yeah. they're everywhere, my friend. They, they've even got these publicists. They're doing the articles where, by the way, they don't look good, and they've got the embedded link to buy the book in the article. Right, like, these guys right. have got the system yeah, to sell they, books yeah, figured yeah, out for sure, for sure. I forget that like all the chicks who are just into like fame culture and just like Kardashians. That's this is just like some offshoot of that. Buddy, shit. Christmas starts coming up. Everyone buys their mom the Jada Pinkett. I'm telling. Once you're in the circuit, of what a fucking lump of coal that is right there. <laughs> Holy shit! Yo, oh, the Jada Smith book, huh? Thanks. It is a lump of coal. <laughs> the kids are bad. They get a Jada Pinkett Smith biography <laughs> and they're just talking. That's like the that's like the equivalent of fucking you know the making a, someone smoke a whole carton of smokes or something. <laughs> You do bad in school, you go, you're reading the Jada Pinkett Smith biography. 100%. That's a lump of coal. 
So she's doing that with her selling crack, first of all, right? She goes, she goes, she's all, her whole thing is how much she loves Tupac because she, she thinks didn't that, sell crack. She probably, yeah, exactly. She did sold Shut crack up. the way that like you've sold drugs before. You know what I, I mean? I think she didn't even do crack or she didn't sell crack. But she, in her mind, she's painting herself as like, you know, just so you know, I'm like from the streets. I was unmarried Tupac. I'm like a bad ass. And it's like, I'm better. No, she's doing my video where she it's like, some, like, she's trying to do that. I'm, be- I, you know, you guys don't have to do what I did, but I'm better now. She, she went to like an art school. Yeah. This is all phony baloney behavior. This is, yeah. I mean, there's one thing to be like, hey, the Tupac, this is documented. To just at this point in the game being like, hey, also, I've, I haven't mentioned this until I was 55, but still crack for a week. Yeah. You go, okay. Okay. You're yeah. Like, yeah. It's like you're not Jay Z. Yeah. Know. You're dating some guy. Like Jay Z's been saying you, that forever, you intermediated but... it between your friends. Yeah, but you're also just like Jay Z. At least has been saying he's was sold coke like since the beginning. It's a little different. A lot different. Yeah. Then uh, coming out now. I mean, it's just like I don't believe it. Me it's... neither. Jada Pinkett Smith. Here's the one. Jada Pinkett Smith expresses concern for Will Smith's aging and need for care. She's revealed that she most likely will, won't be separated from her estranged husband forever. She recently shared her hopes that one day she'll move in um, because in his old age, he's going to need someone to take care of him. Is this Scientology stuff? Like, what's going on? Why That's are, a good point. Why like, is Scientology fucking getting her, taking well, her out? In. That's the thing. Once you're in, you know, you don't go out. There's like, there's repercussions. So I think they have to stay in. They probably, Why isn't Scientology they probably taking mediated, his They probably mediated like, they go, okay, this is what we're going separate. with separate yeah this is probably like a script from scientology but i mean does he not have will smith have friends who you're like yo like you should not be accepting this kind of like behavior like 100 percent. for her to be like he's aging and he's old have you seen him in irobot this guy looks fucking 18 by the way in yeah, his videos for sure she, by the way you go he's aging he got alopecia bitch you're a 52 year old woman yeah. he's a 55 year old jack superhero yeah uh or what did you call it? Not superhero. Uh, action star. Action star. Yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. I can't believe like he's like. Just, when, okay, if you look at. Okay, put it this way: when you see her with a young guy, it looks like his mother. Yeah. When you see Will with like a thirty-year-old, tw- if you saw Will Smith standing between a thirty-year-old supermodel, you don't bat an eye. No, it's totally normal. That's I mean, it's expected almost. So he's going to need someone to take care of him. So she's, you know, this is the kind of thing she's putting out there. She goes, Jada, who is currently not in a relationship with anyone, reflecting on how she felt after the public blamed her in the wake of the Oscar slap incident. So she's painting the Oscar slap thing that uh, she goes, the public blamed her. It was like, no, they were calling him uh, like they blamed him after they found out that you were banging all these dudes in the way that it was all presented. He, I know I've said this before. He must be gay. He must be. I've it's like the separation. The separation. The fact that like he slapped a guy. That's like a gay thing to do is the slap over a woman. Like it's just I don't know. All this stuff is like ex- I don't know. It's she's just, saying the, she's it's not passing the smell test here. It's not passing the smell test that she's the victim. I mean, maybe the whole thing's just a work and we're morons. But it's work seen, for what though? It's like he's, sell books. I guess but like, he's the breadwinner with the movies and you're like if if he even starts if, if his movie sales are affected 5% that's more than any books she could ever sell the Definitely. other way right so you're like if you're thinking of it as like the Smith as like a corporation the family you're like this isn't helping None of this is, um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe he's just trying to get some of her own money into her pocket for when they finally can separate because he's about to take a half a billion dollars from him. I guess. I That's the part that he's probably just looking at that fucking, oof. Jada is not currently in a relationship. She says she's the victim of the slap. After everything that happened, the Will Smith slaps Chris Rock and she goes, I'm the victim of this. <laughs> oh, Chris Rock just got a joke at least. I know. <laughs> Jada, who is currently... Okay, she goes, The aftermath of the incident saw Jada take a lot of flack for Will's actions. Jada shared that it was ridiculous how far it went, especially because people had a false narrative that she cheated on Will. This is the part that really made me fucking bubbled me up, man. So yeah. she's saying that there was a false narrative going around that she cheated on Will. Huh. I'm just going to think for a second. Where did that false narrative come from? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the talk show you did for six months straight and the nine fucking month press tour and she made him come on the show is she saying that and that, talk about her affair. Is she saying that wasn't cheating? Like, is that the thing? She's like, that wasn't She's saying she we cheated. were separated. Yeah. So well, it's like, like why it did people count? think that? Then you lied. They, either you, sh- this woman had Will Smith come on her show, Red Shoe Diaries or whatever, whatever it was. Yeah, Red, yeah. <laughs> 
And then they basically went through the whole thing and she was talking about how when she had the entanglement, she's like, the media is a false narrative. Like, all of that was from your show's clips. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing is fucking... No, you made him look like a bitch. Yeah, that's all she's been. That's all she does. Trump she's like vindictive about it. And now it. she's on another like, press you tour doing think it more. That he got caught like cheating with 20 different women. Yeah, totally. Like publicly. Like Ones a pub, that she knows. Like, like a whole thing where she got publicly humiliated, being like, you know, I was I was faithful to him. And then it turns out he was like all over the place cheating with me. I know. Like, none of that came out. I know. Especially because people had a false narrative. You did a show talking about all the dudes that you banged because you weren't with them. I think that uh, when we just look at human nature, when you look at the breadcrumbs, people need something to blame, Jada said in a bombshell interview today. No, you were on a Will Smith is a bitch tour. And yeah, then people had, and, him, and people had enough of it. You know what I mean? He was the the truth though is he was the bad guy. But everyone was like everyone. Kind of the narrative was the true narrative, which is he was being bitched around for so long, and then this was him standing up for himself. Right. But people, but he didn't stand only up for himself. punished him for so long. People were kind of like that's the bad guy. Then they got over it. If he stands up for himself, he needs to slap her, not Chris Rock. <laughs> well, that's why the people were mad at Will too, and that's why it took us two years to f forgive him. All right. I don't know. But there is a point where he's a battered woman. He, he's, that's like, how he's behaving. Exactly, right? So at some point, it's like, you know, you need to be back on his side. Yeah. You go, okay. You know, at some point when the girl's like the girl and the guy in the big abusive relationship, you go, okay, well, you're not perfect either. But at some point, you just need to rescue them. Someone that just needs to rescue this guy. Fuck these YouTubers boxing. We need to get the two of them boxing. <laughs> the winner fucking gets the haircut. Yeah. <laughs> they have the same haircut. <laughs> And then she goes on and on about how Tupac, with her relationship with Tupac, uh, was so you know so great, and how she just such a gang. She's basically living in a gangster's paradise right. up until when she met Will. Tupac, this Tupac, that fucking Coolio. And by the way, I, it kind of reminds me of like obviously I've dated you know kind of like uh, party scene club promoter you know adjacent type girls. Sure, and it is a very. Tours. It is a very specific type of girl that's always talking about some famous guy that she used to Ugh. date a long time ago. That's the worst. Like, you know what I mean? Just going on about how, oh, I was, you know, dating the singer from All Time Low for a year. And she'll always bring it up. Yeah. Like, those girls that have... You know, some very famous connection. It, they'll 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 never go through a full night without like mentioning the yeah, famous well, it's guy. Their, that they it's used their to high date water mark of their social life, probably. Yeah, or like if they dated like a basketball player or something. Like they'll sure. bring it up nonstop. Uh -huh. Those type of girls. Yeah. Oh, I had. Oh, well, yeah. When I was well, actually that was like when I had my fling with Riff Raff. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's oh, like you didn't tell me you had a fling with Riff Raff. It's such well, they. I don't. You don't care because you're like, yeah. I mean, you're just some chick. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. but you're just like in your mind, you're like rolling your eyes at these girls because they think that they're like slick with like trying to humble brag about some crappy celebrity yeah, that they know, dated or whatever. Yeah. But it's such. It's such a very very specific type of girl mm -hmm. that I mean, she guys is. become celebrities because chicks like that shit. That's just that's how it works. Well, yeah, 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 exactly, right. Well, you come, yeah, so come to celebrities. You go. That's what you get out of this. Like you bang them, and then they can drop it in conversation. Yeah, exactly. Forever. For, that's for very forever. specific type of club like, chasing. Yeah, girl. like you're like yeah, some fucking what was the dude from Swollen Members or whatever. You're like yeah, I fucking <laughs> yeah, 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 Mad Cow or some shit. You're like Mad Child or Mad Child or whatever. You're like yeah, I fuck Mad Child. Yeah. Like, exactly. Right. Yeah. Like, good for him. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck Vanilla Ice is back up to a road. Yeah, yeah, all right. But she has all, or some girl, yeah, just being like, I think I dated one girl. She banged Jay Baruchel and she just slipped that in there every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> oh, you fucked all the Harlem Globetrotters, huh? <laughs> They're actually not that famous, though. <laughs> it's it's such better a, than the Washington Generals. It's such a specific type of human that brings <laughs> that up all the time. So that's it's almost like triggering me that she won't stop talking about how her and Tupac had her thing. Yeah. I mean, it's just uncalled for. It's, it's uncalled for. It's uncalled for. It's unconscionable. It's unconstitutional. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Dude, it's just fuck. It's inevitable. Let, it, let the man it's go. It's irrevocable. It's irrevocable. It's irrestrainable. I mean, what happens? What happens if he kills himself or something? Is that just she won? You know what? Is I was thinking about that. And this is when a famous guy kills himself. This is how much men don't care about suicide. When a famous guy kills himself, you know, one even cares. They wear shirts. Epstein didn't kill himself. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> just because that's easier for their mind than admitting that this person this person was sad. <laughs> How would you like it if you killed yourself and you tried to send a message and everyone's walking around with Tim didn't do it? Yeah, yeah a whole fucking meme. <laughs> That's a good point, Ryan. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a billionaire who went through a hardship in life. Yeah, that's yeah, tough. I mean, it's tough for these for these rich people, I guess. Jada Pinkett Smith says she knew she was pregnant within seconds of sleeping with Will Smith, and he was so pumped about it, and she cried all night long. There is, give me one reason. <laughs> give me, please, give me a reason. Just to run reason. Why. <laughs> give me one reason why there is any possibility that while they're still in their 50s, this isn't a he's dead tell all, for her to be going around saying, I, Will was, when we had a kid, Will was pumped and I was uh, mortified. <sighs> Because I'm many books? so cool, and Will wanted me so bad that he wanted to lock me down, and I hated it. Eventually, I came to like him. Dude, I'm sure. Do you think Will Smith thinks about, like, there must have been, like, you know, the whoever was the second choice. I wonder who that was. His what, second choice? Yeah, what kind of life that might have been. Wasn't he married before? I don't know. Was he? Yeah, I think so. All right. She is the second wife. Oh. Stick with the first one, then. <laughs> That's what happens. Grass is always greener, everybody, but it isn't always. <laughs> Dude, she's literally saying that, and she goes, you know, I'm not the bad guy here. It's like, what, why do I know the name August Ames? That wasn't a, uh, someone, that wasn't a, a leak. That was you telling me about it on your TV what, show. What name was that, Ryan? What's the guy's name? <laughs> August. What's his name? It wasn't that, Ryan. What's the guy's Enjoy name? the comment section, everybody. Who's August Ames? The porn star. What was this guy's name? August something? I don't know. <laughs> wasn't that, though. Johnny, what's the guy's rest, name? Rest in peace, August. Wasn't his name August? Oh, August, August Ames is the porn star that killed himself. That killed herself, yeah, yeah. Legend. Oh, why did they kill himself? Because they got trashed by people? Yeah, she she August she wouldn't Alcina. do gay... What? August Alcina. August oh, okay. Alcina. Yeah, yeah, August Ames was the one that she wouldn't do gay porn, or she wouldn't fuck gay porn stars, or right. whatever, and then they bullied her and she killed herself. Well, I'm sure that's Jada's fault, too. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Jada of... Pinkett bitch, if you ask me. <laughs> Is this her first book, though? <laughs> I don't know. I want to like I I because I, I didn't check it before this, but like how many books did she, she must? Uh, I'm curious. If I she think they fucking them. crank them out, dude. Oh yeah, she got a lot of books. Oh, no, straight. Yeah. They get these massive advances too, and they're printing money. With and they're not even books. writing it. Like she didn't write her own book. That's even. But she's like telling the people the information. You go meet with them and you tell them all the stuff. Yeah, you go, yeah. You go. You go you you know, Will's some... a fucking bitch, and hey, you're like, exactly. and the guy's like, really? Will Smith? Will. You go, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a fucking loser, bitch. He's got oh, so a fucking what? small dick. He can't get it up. He's a bad father. He's just a piece of shit. He's fucking cheap. He's stingy. Preach. All this stuff. And you go, really? Will Smith? He goes, he's a bad actor. You go, bad actor. Bad Come on. Actor. Really? He goes, yeah, he's the worst actor. You go, he has like an Academy Award. Yeah, he's weak. He's short. <laughs> short. I mean, really? I mean, he's like tall. He goes, no, he's short. You go, all right. A lot of people don't know that. It's a tell all. Where's lifts? You go, really? All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she's doing. She's saying she's being vulnerable, but all her vulnerable stuff is that she's the best in Will Smith as a bitch. <laughs> Trashing him. You go, okay. Well, you know what goes so crazy? God damn it. Uh, you, That's oh, a yeah. move. It's a, you, you don't date. You don't. If, I mean, this is not applicable to anybody here. Maybe it is, I guess, somewhat, but not really. But it's just like, you can't date people in showbiz. If you're in showbiz, you don't date people in showbiz. I mean, I know girls that aren't in showbiz that are this, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I guess a million you, of but them. you don't have to garden deal. Garden variety narcissist chick. Yeah, but you don't have to deal with the fact that, like, imagine a garden variety narcissist chick and then happens to be, like, super famous. It's like what that person then becomes is I this. I know, but you don't need that much like they're, followers they're caged, right now. To I know, do but this they're, they're still, like, caged in a little bit, you know? A little for, bit more caged in yeah like there's no books you're like yeah go write a book bitch i don't care like nobody's gonna read it versus this and you're, you're like, saying that but we know us. guys that were taken down by fucking you know tell-alls by girls that had like four followers oh, yes yeah. we know multiple i can name five off the top of my head yeah tell all books or just like in them? the industry well no yeah, <laughs> no yeah. not we don't know five girls that were tell all books that's what i meant it's just like the book <laughs> thing the book yeah obviously lot. anybody could go on fucking go make a tiktok that gets a million views just calling some dude out but yeah and anyway. she's not even calling him out. she's just call, she's just saying he's a loser i know it's crazy that's what i'm saying but okay. the, the person she's sitting in the interview to write the book and the guy goes okay so when you got uh 
when you got pregnant, what happened? And they go, oh, Will was so happy that he got me pregnant. He was just knew that he locked me down and he was happy. And what were you doing? Cried. He goes, I was looking up abortion <laughs> clinics in I the fucking, phone book. I cried. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to get an abortion. I was crying. It's like, why? It's like, because I'm better, I'm better than him. I don't know. I don't know. Fucking carry his weak sperm. Well, you don't have any sort of... Uh, uh, you don't have any preservation for the person you were with. I never really go on record and trash talk anyone that I like dated for a while. No, I don't do that. No, me Fuck neither. No. It's a fucking know. scumbag move. No, never. Only to no. Even if they did something super bad, I don't even tell people, man. No, no. You gotta just you gotta put that in the past, you know. Put it in the past, but also it's like whatever, right? Yeah. You're not gonna. But what are you trying to get revenge on someone? I don't know. I mean, it sounds like she's trying to get revenge on him. It does yes, feel but like it's it. just like what did he for do? What? Yeah, being like. Like unless that's part of the tell-all sorry, book is the last chapter. Loving goes, you, yeah. Like maybe the last chapter is like in case everybody's wondering why I'm like this, and then that's the big fucking tell-all. And you should go, and there's some explanation. Has sex with dogs yeah, or something crazy, <laughs> and you go, okay. So His reaction though, he's sort of playing it okay though. He goes, he sort of said, "I wish her the best," and yeah, he's and he posted it. he's on a boat and he's just on a boat by himself, and he goes, "I can take naps anywhere." It's like almost a guy losing his mind a little bit. Yeah, you think about it too. You know, you could be you're just on a boat by yourself. Everyone's like, "Hey, what are you saying about this stuff?" Where she basically says, "You're the biggest bitch ever." She's in love with Tupac. You're a loser. <laughs> and then he goes, he goes, "Look at me." He goes, he posted an Instagram. He goes, "I can take a nap anywhere." That's what he, he goes, said. "Hey, everybody, look at me. I'm on a boat." And then they stop filming, and it's him tying an anchor around his waist. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, cruel world. She's talking about how she did acid with her son too. So that's another part that's of fine. like she, that's, I cannot think of a person I would less want to do acid with in my life than my mother. Uh, or I can't picture or Jada Pinkett Smith <laughs> or Jaden Smith. <laughs> he two, might be all right. I don't know, man. He's where his dresses and stuff. He's a wack. He's a wacky dude. But he'd be you'd be looking at him. My mom and his be, mom are the two people probably I don't want. to You're do telling me with. you wouldn't want to do acid with him, and then you'd be like, "What's up, dude?" And he'd be like, "Did I not tell you that the gender binary?" He'd be telling you about the gender <laughs> binary. Sure I don't to, want to hear about the gender binary when I'm yeah, doing acid. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'd be like, you just put on some music. The only binary one I want to hear about is the fucking. <laughs> he seemed to be like guitar. the kind of dude, though, guy who you'd be like, hey, man, like you'd be doing acid with him in like LA. He goes, you want to do something cool? And you go, yeah, what do you think? And he goes, hop in the let car. Let me show you my mom's no, dildo no, collection. And then you like drive to Vegas and he's just got that sphere all to himself. Mm. And you go, we got the sphere. We can do whatever we want. And then you're just playing fucking video games in the sphere, watching like Clockwork Orange or something. He goes, that's cool. possible. Yeah. I don't know. I, didn't, I was making fun of Jaden Smith for a while. Then he had that one song, Icon, that I thought was good. That's all it takes with me to like someone is one thing that I like, hey. and then I'm, they're back in my good graces. Didn't even know he did music. So. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> I used to be my like go-to thing to make fun of. Like, it would kind of be like, oh, my favorite rapper is, I mean, I like Lil Bow Wow, Jaden Smith. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used yeah. to always kind of say that. Like, you know, Little Zane's great. Like, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. My favorite two bands are um, Puddle of Mud and Jaden Smith. <laughs> it's just like a funny yeah, name. Yeah, funny. But then you have that one song, it was like, Icon. It's actually sick. So. Well, I'm telling you, you do one good thing. You're back in my yeah, graces, that's forgiving fine. person. That's fine. Unlike J, uh, unlike Jada Pinkett like Smith. Jesus, basically. I so basically Ryan, Ryan Jesus Long. I'm like J Jesus in that I've been persecuted by the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, fellas, if you think that maybe seeing a therapist might be helpful to you or a psychiatrist, but you don't actually have the time to find one, you don't have the time to meet up with them or potentially afford it, probably a good idea for you to give Talkspace a try. You've probably heard about it already, but by doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help you need and want easy it's made it affordable and most importantly it's very accessible so sometimes there's people you know that you just need someone to talk to and you'll wait until bad things happen to talk to a therapist why wait you can get a therapist through Talkspace therapy can help you shift your perspective find tools to cope in difficult times and can be a guiding light getting started is the important part so Talkspace makes it easy and affordable it's incredibly convenient they got virtual sessions with licensed professionals from the comfort of your home you don't gotta commute to appointments miss time at work or line up child care in order to attend a session mental health care made easy and there's lots of people out there who might just not have someone to talk to and Talkspace lets you send messages to your therapist so you don't have to wait till your next session Talkspace is secure and private and they use the latest end-to-end -end bank grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations so your info is safe it's affordable and in network with most major insurers so as a listener to the podcast you'll get $80 off your first month 
month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash BoysCast. So to match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash BoysCast to get $80 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash BoysCast. And you know I got to tell you about something that I've been using nonstop, and that's Factor. My freezer's full of it, and I've been having probably at least one a day, but sometimes I've been cranking a couple a day. And the, with the busy fall season in swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. can help you feel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. I've been cranking the chicken ones most importantly but also i didn't have one of my last couple batches but pork chop i've been getting and i started to like that oh, one you're like too. you're a pork chop man Actually, I, 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 to be honest i didn't know i was a pork chop man but i, I am like a, a pork chop. chop man i like a good chop and the thing that i like about them is they usually have a good vegetable that sort yeah. of combines with the very uh, balanced meal they're, they're it's very... a balanced meal so if you're too busy running around during the day to think about lunch keep your energy up with lunch to go effortless wholesome meals like grain bowls salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go no microwave requirements Required as well. If you need an extra boost to support your wellness goals and feel your best as you tackle a busy autumn, you can try the Protein Plus with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. That's how you get jacked. Yeah, protein. They offer delicious, flavor packed options on the menu each week to fit a variety of lifestyles from keto, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, Protein Plus, prepared by chefs, approved by dietitians. Each meal's got all the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long while meeting your goals. And they are super easy. You just pop them in the micro for the one that I've been doing. Head to factormeals.com slash boyscast50. Use the code boyscast50 to get 50% off. That is code boyscast50 at factormeals.com slash boyscast50 to get 50% off. One more sort of red pill thing before we move on. Is there's this guy that proposed to a girl. And then she, uh, he changed his mind. Basically, he they kind of had a tumultuous situation. He got booked doing stuff with other girls, and then they were going to break up, and she didn't want him to, but he proposed, and he gave her a ring or whatever. And this girl sued him, basically saying, and this might be relevant to you, that uh, <laughs> <laughs> she goes, he changed his mind, said so he didn't want to get married anymore, and she sued him for 50K and then won. Yeah. What is going on in these courts, man? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't understand the basis for that. I might. Like, what is she saying? Because she quit her job to take care of the kids, so then like she, she some shit her, like that, some common law bullshit. Money. But then, but she's saying um, the decision was basically a breach of promise to marry. That was what she was suing. That's for. That's a law, dude. You know they have seasteading. Yeah, that's the only way to get married. <laughs> Your chick goes, "We get married, you go over sea setting on a no jurisdiction marriage." <laughs> Don't count. We got married in the ocean. <laughs> you agree? You're like, yes, I will get married. And we're having a ceremony. <laughs> that one square like, mile. <laughs> half the people who are watching are just vomiting as the fucking thing just goes back. What's the area that's technically no one's international land? waters? <laughs> Get married in international. You have to have your wedding in international waters. It's <laughs> a good move. For proposing, <laughs> she goes, "Yeah, we're oh, we're gonna get married. It's gonna be on a big boat." She goes, "Where's it going?" <laughs> Just a little bit further. No, you got to do it. Remember the guy who who died or whatever. I think we covered this. Or the guy who died, and then he was worried that his wife would divorce him. So then he filed for a divorce for her like the day after they got married, and she never knew. That's, that's the what you, smartest that's move, the move in history. That you do, is you just literally. She didn't realize they were divorced. Yeah, he just he's like, oh, "Honey, let's get married." You do the whole thing, and then the next day he's like, "I'd like to file for a divorce, please." Don't you have to get her to sign the papers though? It's forge a signature, man. No, I think where he did it, it was like some annulled it. It was either some weird country or some. It was like in Cuba or it's some the most space movie it was, of all time. It was something where like he was allowed to do it, and then he just did it, and then they. She, and then when she uh, went to get a divorce, and she's remember, like, "We've been married for no." 50 he died. Years. He died, and then oh. she was like some crazy um like battle over the assets, and they're just like. Like you guys were never married, or you were oh, married for a shit. week or something, like thirty-five years ago. Dude, imagine that you get fake certificates, fake every. Oh, oh my Dude, god! It's an amazing prank from the dead, right there. That's <laughs> as good of a prank from the dead as it gets. She <laughs> goes, "Oh, I'm getting so I'm much really money." He goes, that. "You ain't getting shit, bitch." <laughs> Incredible. Stuff. I'm getting so much money. You getting a job, <laughs> bitch? <laughs> Wrong. How about this? <laughs> you go to the will. She goes to the thing, the will, and then he goes. It said uh, "box of riches," and you open it up, and it's a McDonald's apron. <laughs> <laughs> 
You just have to go on a scavenger hunt to get those ridges. (laughs) The headpiece. (laughs) The takeout headset. (laughs) It's the drive-thru window headset. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Tough times. But that is a crazy prank, though. You say you're getting married to a chick, and then you basically get, like, fake certificates, and then a fake priest and everything. You do the whole fake ceremony, and she just was never married. Yeah. I I could see that happening, or have, have... have happened in the past in some capacity like wow. some guy who's like like the double family person who needed to like double family guys get married again yeah 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 there's also guys that are like not official citizens too so they're using like a fake id yeah, so you're like yeah, sure. the girl's like you are married and you're like yes you and yeah, a yeah. guy are married <laughs> <laughs> You and some poor chump who was not me are married. Hi, you're right. You are married to John Hernandez. <laughs> so basically the thing was they had to do the court, right? And in the court, the guy was kind of funny because the guy's trying to appeal the decision. He goes, if I have to pay her for our time together, that essentially would make her a prostitute. And that's against the law. And the judge gave him an eye roll and said, nice try. <laughs> the old prostitution defense. He goes, yeah, the judge is like, <clears throat> yeah, I tried that with my own wife. <laughs> I think it's a girl judge, work. dude. Oh, okay. I bet you there's a lot of girl judges that go into marital court. Probably. Yeah, they go. Yeah, so basically he was he's pointing at her and he goes, define prostitution by Webster's <laughs> Dictionary <laughs> is defined as exchange of cash or services in exchange for sex. Would that not? But yeah, apparently this guy... Uh, got screwed right so G. the judge basically was like how often you banging and then he goes how much does he nag you knock off a couple for that and they like came up with an amount <laughs> for him calling off the engagement so you got to be careful there out yeah. there <laughs> folks you got to be careful out there oh, is the moral see, of the story yeah very careful that's uh, a lot of jada pink and bitches out there <sighs> really real sobering stuff that's really makes you think <laughs> you know it does really make you think. So our for- justice system is just not for the boys. The same reason as we were off wishy washy about Elon Musk, and then we gave Elon Musk the last chance. We said if he if he actually pulls through on his Twitter deal, we we are give him our full support. Yeah. Uh, Will Smith has the boys' cast full support again. Is there anyone else that we didn't like, and then we switched over and gave him our full support? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. No, we're a free. We're a full free Will Smith family now. Yeah, I like him. I like him freed. <laughs> just you're, you're just. I mean, you think he is a PR person? I need. You know what they do? Like, does he not have like a team who they're like? This just looks bad. Make her disappear, man. Scientology. Yeah, that is true. Make her go on a fucking. You know what he's doing? He's testing out with that boat. She's, well, she's probably knows where fucking Miscavige's wife is, and that's why she. That's ain't going nowhere. <laughs> She's got her own little Samson option. That's what Will was doing on the boat. You know what I mean? He yeah. was like dicking around, uh, <laughs> loosening a couple of screws for when she takes it. Because <laughs> I bought you a boat. <laughs> USS Liberty. <laughs> okay, so Israel and Palestine. Me and Danny, both of us, for the last week, I mean, we went, I guess, which... You know, this is there's a part of it that comedy does fry your brain, but it's also a part of it. Twitter where, has been frying my brain. Twitter, yeah, yeah. But uh, I've been both of us have been nonstop, including people we know, getting emails, letters. F- basically, we're both yeah, getting cease and desist. Hey, Ryan, uh, you don't have a Jewish mother? <laughs> Did your mom with? get mad at you? Yeah. What'd your mom say? She's just like, this isn't the time to make jokes. I'm no. Like, what is? Your mom gave you hell? Well, she. I had this one joke where I was literally making fun of the people who were like, um, who were uh, dying. No, it was just, oh. just like all the intersectional people who were just like, you know, uh, the anti-racist folks essentially who were just like uh, anti-racist, but then like, you know, enjoying the dead Israelis. And then I was like, yeah, I mean, you've been, you've just been, you've been, you've been like an edgy liberal on this almost. Yeah, I've been, going I've been going, I mean, I've just been, you know what I mean? Like old school edgy liberal sort yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been uh, calling them how I see them, I guess, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's a while. There's actually a kid I just saw yesterday. What would your mom say? She's just like you know, because she's just like. Needs no time for jokes. Yeah, but then but then I'll I'll win her back because she follows me on Twitter because I got her on Twitter now. You got her on? Yeah. So my mom like DMs me on Twitter and stuff, and then she'll be like, I don't like this, and then I'll and then I'll have one. She goes, that one's good. 
that was a good one. And then she, I told you, she sends me like red pill memes. <laughs> Your mom's back on mom's like, mom sends me red pill memes and shit on Twitter. I think some most of the people in my real life have sort of given up. They know that they're like they. All you can do is if you if you give me like a if someone one of my someone that I'm kind of friends with right now wants to send me like a you're going too far message. All they can do is get like, I saw, left I, on I, scene. I, yeah, I sent. Oh, I said I I got one from someone we know who is like, who is like an old uh, used to be like a per, a personality that was pretty popular. Yeah, but less then, popular now. Yeah, and then anyways, and I got some long message from him where he's like, I think you're going too far here with this stuff, and I go, all right. But it's so crazy. You go, there's this is the this is the how my I think the point I'm trying to make is so I got forty fucking letters and I got I got the same thing as a media a million times too where people send me full out emails being like what you don't realize sure. and then they go th- I'm literally just got one where someone goes what you're not realizing is that Hamas and Palestine are different things and uh, like so, <laughs> yeah, 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 like course, just right. all that sort of shit where you go what what, what 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 I mean I've been yeah, we've been talking about this stuff for fucking yeah, of course. you know fifteen years like yeah. yeah yeah, that's what I don't. I don't. That's a nuance that I don't understand. But my point is, is you go, you have a world that's so crazy right now that you have college kids out here, you know, essentially doing, you know, gas the day of the, rallies. The day of jihad get, for me was was fucking a pain in the ass. Well, go ahead, sorry. No, no. I'm, I was just saying the the day of jihad rally or whatever they had on Friday, and then my everybody in my family was like, "You can't go outside." And I'm like, "Are you kidding me? I can't go go outside." Like they're not gonna do anything. First off, what kind of terrorists announce they're gonna do terror? Mm-hmm. Like they go, "Hey." Tomorrow's terror day. No. No, I was like, fuck that shit. The only thing you did was a global day of jihad on that toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say some of that porcelain got fucking brucked up. Yeah. No, I mean, listen. The the West is in decline, and everyone's hell-bent on celebrating it. All you can really do is make jokes at this point. Yeah. Like, these people are... For sure. Like, how about this for a joke? You know, you know how I said that uh, Zelensky is the turned side into the piece? side chick or whatever. Yeah. How about this? A sketch. It won't work because none of us can do impressions good enough. But a sketch. Zelensky and Joey Greco. <laughs> 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 Pretty good, right? Yeah. Zelensky and Joey Greco come into a meeting between Biden and Netanyahu. Yeah, and Netanyahu stabs Joey Greco. <laughs> Joey Greco. <laughs> <laughs> the cheaters. I what they are doing here? <laughs> and he's got the he's got the stupid glasses. Maybe. On. So that's an option. That's a good one. Yeah. Fuck man. But okay. So and you, we're gonna go through some of the uh, insane things that are going on right now. But it's the fourth turning. What does that mean? It was that it was that guy. Uh, fuck, I can't remember his name. But he we talked about it before. He wrote that book about the fourth turn. About it's called the fourth turning. Uh, Neil Howe good book but it's basically how the world goes through these cycles these seasons and every season is about 25 years and it just goes through these like cycles and we're currently in the fourth one which is the super chaotic one and it basically started like around right when trump came in but it's yeah. like lasts like 25 years oh really yeah and then but from that is like it's essentially so it's gonna like, be basically our whole adult life yeah yeah, yeah. The next, I mean, if he's right and he's like, it's been, you know, obviously there's kind of a weird deal for us. There's exceptions, but I mean, I think anybody who's ever been eighty years old, like, lived through some sort of like, yeah, dude, we, I you don't have to say, do it in your, you know, twenties and thirties. I always, well, would you rather do it when you're fucking five getting bombed out? Like, no, I'd know, rather do it when you're out, over fifty, where you're, guess, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, but anyways, any, I think anybody's always like, dude, the shit like my fucking. All my families live through. You're like, okay. I mean, I guess it's gotta have something. I mean, it's still not bad. I guess that's true. It's still not bad. Like the worst thing that's happening right now is just like I don't know. My eggs cost more. It's like <laughs> that sucks. I guess. Yeah, and you don't even need to buy them, but yeah, you just like eggs. to fertilize them or whatever. Know, just like a good egg, you know. The um. <clears throat> so the first of the wackiness, which is, it's kind of the intersectional stuff, but a large. You go, the Israel Israel makes the hormones I needed, <laughs> but I support Palestinian liberation. Oof. So this is full out, you know, brain aneurysm happening. Yeah. And I guess I've so basically she's like she she's, you know, Israel trans person and she looked and the, you know, her hormones were made by Israel and it wasn't Mohammed's, you know, it, uh, uh, Mohammed's, uh, Mohammed's uh, male zone? estrogen caliphate that didn't <laughs> exist, right? Hormone zone? <laughs> 
Yeah, that's. I mean, that's too bad. It's. It's just. I mean, it's not like the Israeli government's making it. It's just like a company in Israel's. She making says it. it's tied into pro-Israel stuff. Man. <laughs> well, she doesn't want to support Israel. Well, then company. don't. I don't know. Yeah. Well, then where's she gonna get her hormones from? Well, guess what? Uh, I'm not. That's not the only thing that's <laughs> happening. Because I have a. I want to support Palestine, but my problem is apparently. Yeah. Hamas and the Palestinian, uh, you know, uh, religion as a whole don't have my kink gear <laughs> what do they make your favorite kink gear well that's the thing I, I, yes obviously i want to support palestine but i'm gonna need i have a i like to wear a, a ball gag yeah. i like a leather gimp mask mm. and i'd wear that around and so it's gonna be a b- bit of a rude awakening for me yeah. when i'm not able to get my gear yeah. My leather daddy outfit. <laughs> this is your favorite kink supply store is in the, located on the Gaza Strip? This is my problem. <laughs> hey, man. Should shop local. Well, it's going to be bad news for my furry convention because I have a furries <laughs> for Palestine. That's funny. Furries for Palestine. <laughs> it's probably a real thing. <laughs> probably the Palestinians are like, what now? What are you guys doing for us now? Just chill. We don't need all your support. Nipple tasseled men for Palestine. <laughs> Oh, it's crazy. Okay, so a large part of the community in the U.S. is being... Oh, and then they go, is being forced to choose between life-affirming transition and Palestinians' demand for freedom. But by the way, when they have to choose, they have to choose between what to post, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. That's what they mean. Right, yeah, yeah, Well, I guess immorally they go, like, I don't want to support this thing. I wonder if, like... Uh, the Palestinians have maybe tried the tact of being like, hey, it it affirms us to invade Israel. Like that was to speak like, their language. They just go, hey, it affirmed our gender to invade Israel. And then maybe Israel's like, oh, sorry, we didn't, we didn't Yeah, yeah I guess to, You know, got to get them on their own. You know, you come to them where they're at. Yeah, exactly, you know. Excuse me, I said when I went back to the... Oh, excuse me, I said when I went back to the pharmacist because she found out that it was Teva Pharmaceuticals that make her estrogen. Yeah, it's like one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world. And I'm a big supporter of BDS. Uh, could I please have um? a prescription from a different... <laughs> I don't know, I can think she has BDS back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no it's, the, it's the Roger Waters thing. This was no longer just about feeling free in my body. So that's... she. Uh, it's a, it's a, I think it's guy to girl. I'm having trouble sort of putting these does together. Does it matter? No, it, do, it really doesn't matter. So basically they want Muhammad's dick removing cream <laughs> and they can't get it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ahmed's, you know, Ahmed's prepubescent. Yeah, they got to settle for Moish's schmeckle remover. <laughs> Instead of Ahmed's, you know. Yeah. Ahmed's, uh, <laughs> Ahmed's trying to remove the bone a different way by fucking <laughs> detonating. <laughs> we have no uh, way to remove penis. Yeah. Yes, come with us. We do it in the back room. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, hey, I'm here for my, uh, give my son puberty blockers. And you go, oh, yes, yeah, we heard about you. Come back here, back room. We, we do surgery. <laughs> I wonder if there's going to be like some humanitarian thing where there's like the two trans people in Gaza who are like, we can't get our human, we our puberty blockers or whatever because they got like Hamas keeps using them for whatever to make some sort of like rocket or some shit. <laughs> Gets yeah. repurposed. No, so these people's <clears throat> brains are like very fried. Uh huh. You know what? Another a decent point that someone said was the Uyghur Muslims. You don't hear a lot about them anymore. You know. No. What I mean? Well, there aren't any more. But it is so funny that the they just like it's so political where people are it's like if you ever said to these people here, you go, Hey, the Uyghur Muslims in China, no one wants to say anything, but they go, These Muslims and they go, Yeah, these Muslims should they you know all I mean I will say what. that the Uyghur Muslims is like as bad as it is that they're in these like re education camps. It is worse what's happening to the Palestinians in terms of just like sheer Yeah, but it's just flipped violence. on who cares. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's you well, know Well they move on. It's it's just Yeah, people. but this is complete polar opposite. It's like right wing people care about the Uyghur Muslims and left wing people care about these Muslims and they're like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know what's okay, so college campuses has been kind of the big big debate right now because uh-huh. some of uh, your people have been pulling the money. Yeah. Um and uh, it is the amount of by the way anti cancel culture people who have now become pro cancel culture people over this is Dave Rubin. In, in, Dave Rubin is insane. Dave Rubin is he not only is Megan he pro Kelly. not even has he become pro cancel culture, but then they're also anti free speech. They're like you can't rally, you can't uh like pro cancel you're like these are all the things you were very recently 
pretty. This shit. These were like tenants of your thing. No, this shit exposes how full of shit some people are, and it's funny because they always go. Look at the. A lot of times they go, look at the hypocrisy. This guy, oh, so you don't do this anymore? And you go, yeah, and you're the opposite of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You go, so you supported this now, but you support this now. And you go, yeah, and you're the reverse of that. Yeah, and you like, supported that then and this now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't have a good example off the tip of my head, but the. I, it is. I try to. If you take the. the I think the thing that struck me the most out of the whole last little while was if you just look at. Every person that for the last like five years has said, you know, if there's one, you know, Nazi flag there, this is the worst. You know, anyone with the four people that made a, you know, a a wrong joke, you Mm -hmm. know, is on every hate list or whatever. Charlottesville is, you know, even January 6th, you go, this was a legitimate, the world, they they were about to take over the United States government. Um, Charlottesville, like people going to that, it's, they're irredeemable, the worst thing in the world. And if you gave, any of these colleges tiki torches they're that they're richard spencer then times 10 uh-huh. yeah yeah oh, they'd be marching they would be they would fire be firing up those tiki torches with the with the uh what is it the khaki pants yeah yeah <clears throat> and i think i probably think the same thing then as i think now where you go yeah these these college kids are uh mental their brains are broken but their brains are broken because they're like the but whole I, ideology is a brain broken yeah ideology. but i'm also just like look yeah i agree but also just like look i mean obviously if you're like some muslim students group it's like who do you expect them to support? Like, what are they going to be like Muslim student, Harvard Muslim students for Israel? Like, I don't know. Yeah. You're like, I guess people would be like, well, just don't say anything. I don't know. But then that's anti-free speech. The argument against it would be, uh, okay, let's say that you were uh, <clears throat> any group, right? The day after there was like a, a terrorist attack, you'd, you, you wouldn't celebrate that part of it. I think that's what the argument is. Yeah. But again, this wasn't a terrorist attack. It was a freedom fighters attack. Well, that's the exactly. They, they, that's what they say. They go, there wasn't. Like again, like there was a video. No, but there's videos. I think of that people me and you, I kind of. I yeah, think that we, me yeah, and you course. probably have a. You just look at the whole thing and you can kind of see all the parts of it. But I'm not trying to explain what's happening. I'm explaining why people's minds are blown. Yeah, by what's of course, happening. of course. Yeah, they can't. They can't. Again, it's just like people are able to just have so many conflicting things just fucking banging around their heads. Yeah, well, they're not. Well, sort of, but they're not now, and that's why the Amy Schumer's the word. Like that's why oh, a lot the of Amy these, <laughs> but a lot of these Jewish people are having like their minds are blown, and you're just like, you know, you go to these college campuses, you know, up until now they were so reasonable. It's like you know these they were just doing their no white people days, and you know, just, they, this is a, these people are like, and I marched with your no white. Well, it's just like they literally <laughs> kicked professors off the college because they're having a no white people day, and this is some surprise. That, it, that's what I'm saying. There's say. kind of an astounding lack of uh, self preservation that you see on some parts of. What did too. you mean by that? I actually didn't get that one. Well, because you see all these like, <clears throat> for example, trying to give me a water. I mean, we kind of have a lack of self you take this right now uh-huh. we sort of have a lack of self-preservation to some degree we just say what we think <laughs> no well it's just like you see these like someone like amy schumer who's like yo i marched with all your things expecting that like when they're coming for me like you're gonna protect me and you're like no they were never gonna help you like all the people who you thought when you went and marched on all your like rallies the anti-white people being like i'm one of the good ones and then like the moment this shit happens you just realize you're like oh yeah they're never gonna help you like they're not on your side no like and she just like i could have told her that and we could have told her that where you're like yo they're not gonna help you you know what you are exactly what happened but it is you actually the one interesting thing that i will say and those people it's exactly what you said i've sort of said this many many times on this podcast that uh jews are sort of like the final boss for progressives yeah because if you always go it's like even in the joke it was you know even if you look at essentially what the alt-right is is they're like white guys and then they go hey there's one more up on that totem pole yeah that's kind of like their argument right if you right of course of like course. It's, in some way it was like social justice for white people absolutely but um if, if the final boss of that if you go if you have an ideology where the whole deal is if someone has more representation than they should yeah and sh- what they should have is everyone even across the board if you're 40 percent of the population you just have 40 percent of the jobs if you're 30 sure. percent of the it's communism it's legitimate communism right yeah. you go the final boss obviously is that right? for sure so it but the other side of that 
is that so you know there's this big jewish guy right and he's wexler and you kind of think he did victoria's secret and Less, he's taking millions Less, away from the colleges because of their stances at harvard and stuff like yeah, that right? he's go- also like one of the main fucking Je- he literally had to step down from victoria's secret because of his uh tie-ins with jeffrey epstein <laughs> <laughs> whoops but the interesting thing that i've sort of noticed and this took i only sort of kind of finally like hit me after a couple of days i was just like you almost have to remember like respect the Jews do get shit done. Because, like, if you think about it, like, one way to look at it is, you know, like, okay, I'll even say, you've been sort of arguing people about Jewish people where they go, which is somewhat true, where they go, you're white when it's convenient and Jewish yeah, when it's convenient. Yeah. But then you could go the other way where they go, and to them, you're Jewish when you're convenient. Yeah, and you're white when you're convenient. That's so the thing. It's like, it I don't, goes I, both ways. Yeah, it goes both ways. Like, I can't, like, I always, I used to have a joke about it, but you're like, if they start rounding up Jews, I can't just be like, oh, guys, no, no, no. Like, right. everybody's been saying I'm white for this period of time, so I'm just going to go with that yeah, so now. Like, and they're like, well, no. So that sort of goes both it, yeah, ways. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? And I obviously do joke about it, yeah. Yeah, but, and, and obviously it's just kind of funny, but. They are sort of okay. If you're if you're just like a white dude, right? They've Which I done, am. They've done a pretty good job of making like if you're just a Republican white guy or whatever. They've made like um, what would be the word defending anything like quote unquote white so toxic you can lose your of job, course, right? Of course. So any dude wants to be like basically something that would be just normal in any other. If you said, if you lived in Japan and you go, I don't want this to be minority Japan. If you say, I don't want to be normally white, it's like, you might as well be in the Ku Klux Klan. You know it's what I mean? Yeah. So they've really done a good job of doing that. But the Jews sort of <laughs> have not let their thing, ha- that happen to them. So one way you could say, if you were a... If well, you that's were, why everybody gets mad about Israel because everybody's like, oh, so Israel gets an ethno state, but we don't get an ethno state? Like all the like essentially nationalists? Well, the, the, I guess I, if I, I was... So I, I get that point. If you were on the other side of it, you'd be like... Yeah, you're you pussies. Let people, you know what I mean, you guys. Yeah, I guess you could say it the other way around. Yeah. But if you are white, you there is a part of it where they go. They're sort of the final. They're the final step where you go. Anyone with too much power is problematic. Absolutely. Because in t- if they can take down that final pin, it's that's the final pin in it, right? Yeah, yeah. But if they sure. can't take down that top pin, then the thing always sort of never really quite materializes. Yeah. That's why you see like the fucking the memes coming back, or like the Kanye memes are basically back in full effect. Like What's all his that. memes coming Remember back? like the red, the chart with the red chart or whatever? <laughs> and like the, there's another one that's been going around, which is like all the Jews and like the media or whatever. And then you're like, and you look at it, and it's like, pretty uh i guess compelling somewhat if you don't really know but because i was looking at the one like someone there was one going around yesterday that was like a big one and there was like oh here's like all the jews who work for like uh comcast or whatever and you're like the ceo of comcast is jewish but then you're like yeah but his dad started it so you're like okay that's not that crazy but then also you're like there's also they have one hundred and eighty thousand employees and they're like here's 30 people that work at <laughs> fucking comcast that are jewish and you're like yeah like i mean i guess i mean should it, i guess you're, the argument is it should be zero i don't know well the other argument the other way around <laughs> well they should all be working like the call centers i guess or something well yeah and then i guess the other way it was like well yeah and the same thing that I guess other people do when they say that. Okay, I guess, Okay, it's the same thing. People go like, "Look at all these top people; they're white or whatever." I guess the argument that you could make that they're that isn't that crazy is they're like, "Well, I don't like it that they keep saying they're all white, and it's not. It's like I'm I'm getting the like flack for something that I'm not even doing." Sure. You know what I mean? They go, hey, look, and it's 90% white. And they're like, it's not, though. Yeah, it's, well, yeah. One when there's lies, and then, like, there's one when you're like, it's not even true. Like, that was another thing. The NP, like, I, because I was like, I, you know, I'm generally curious about this, because I've said this before, but, like, Jews do not shy away from when they, like, are excelling at things to brag about those things, right? So then there was, like, one of the things of, like, the six, uh, media organizers was like NPR and you're like NPR is all Jewish and then like I went and looked it's like there's no Jews at NPR like if you look at their whole fucking like what is t- it, upper bra- dude it's all just POC? like su- the most intersectional shit you could imagine that's, you're right I would imagine dude it's, that. it's like remember, you know the photo that funny photo that's going around of uh, that city councilor in Canada you know and it's like the girl in the wheelchair and there's a chick dressed like a witch and there's like four people in like rainbow suits you know what I'm talking about <laughs> that photo that's what the fucking head of of NPR is that's what the the, the upper. Dude, have you seen the? Uh, have <laughs> you, probably like one. Have you seen the fashion show they did? Who? Dude, they did a fashion show. Oh, I think yeah. And literally, 
it is a, a girl walks with one leg and then they have, i'm not kidding you yeah this chick on the scooter right the girl on the scooter but she just can't move and it goes, <laughs> she runs down and then it's just a girl with no legs fucking rolling down the fucking aisle and what's funny about that and you're just like i can't believe i wasn't there it's funny <laughs> that i it's funny that we weren't able to get tickets <laughs> He goes to support them. It's to me. I'm saying it's funny, like ironic that always when I'm not paying attention, the best fashion shows happen. Like we're we're just out here calling fashion shows gay. Yeah. When in fact there actually are some pretty good ones. I think it's funny in the same sense that it's like ten thousand spoons when all you need is a knife. I mean, I will say that the funny thing is that there is at that there's this fashion show of these like whatever you know differently abled people, and then there's like some perfect 10 who's out of work just stewing being like that should be me i'll cut your arm off yeah literally you're like i am a fucking gorgeous model you were and correction I, you yeah. were a gorgeous and I'm, model. I'm still conventionally gorgeous and i am out of work you know what's right another now. good point on that fashion stuff because before they used to say all oh, the fashion industry uh you know made us try to be too skinny and all that stuff yeah. and now the girls have their eyelash toupees and all that sort of shit you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> but you go <laughs> but you go and, and whatever trying to get too skinny or too fat or fake asses or whatever it's like Yeah, but now it's you guys doing it to yourself. It's literal girls. Your average girls in Photoshop have have more reach than the company. So it's like, who are you blaming it on now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because think about the ladies that do it. It's like, yeah, it's literally you guys. So you took the fashion industry. They don't have as much, you know... um, Pull is you, uh, fucking Dixie D'Amelio or whatever. Sure, yeah, yeah. And you go, so now you got no one to blame but yourself. Nope. When left to your own devices, you guys are all putting a airbrushing a different human over your face. <laughs> the fashion industry was more honest than these normal girls now. Fashion industry eventually. Girls probably- are on Tinder wearing a mask. Yeah. <laughs> They're just gonna sell just like what's the, the just straight fabrics like the, they're just gonna be like here just take a thing a roll of fabrics and just <laughs> I don't know figure it out I don't know what the hell you guys are anymore we know that some of the boys are out here getting jacked getting ripped getting shredded yeah, out are. here working we're on here. sculpting that bod yeah so listen you know that sometimes mo- maintaining momentum can be tough you know you got a busy schedule. Or maybe you're all over the place. Going on the road. You're getting you're traveling. You're hitting plateaus. Yep. Right? You don't have enough variance in your routine, exercise, variation. So it's important to keep challenging yourself, to keep it interesting, but also to keep hitting those PRs, keep moving up, which is why I got to tell you about FitBot. So FitBot creates custom workouts based on your goals, experience, available equipment, and more. They help you build your fitness habits and stay consistent. Keeps it interesting for me. I told you, you can whatever. I work at a multiple gym a lot of times yep. so whatever gym you are you just type it in that keeps it interesting it also gives you a lot of exercises that you didn't even know kind of how to do dude i'm doing them i mean i use fitbot four days a week like literally i use it it's the best it's yeah. like it literally gives me a new exercise it's like if you're you know i'm going uh away for the weekend you just plug in what the, that hotel gym has or whatever mm-hmm. bingo bango bingo bango the app intelligently varies your intensity and volume and tracks muscle fatigue and recovery to design a well-balanced workout plan which actually sometimes i screw up my things and that's why it's, that's another thing that I like that's good because sometimes I'll I'll mess up my days or whatever. Yeah. So you kind of like, oh, can I do this exercise? Or is that yeah, for sure. Days or tells, yeah, totally. So it's never been easier to get the results you've always wanted. Check out FitBod and you get 25% off your subscription at fitbod.me slash boyscast. That is F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash boyscast. I'm going to tell you about another company we brought on board again, and that is Lucy makes tobacco-free nicotine for people to focus better, think deeper, chill out smoother, and inspire creativity. So, this is Tucker Carlson's been big on uh, talking about the nicotine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he went on a whole thing about yeah, it. I know, he's on a Nelk Boys. This is the greatest, the greatest thing known to man. Increased alertness, attention, and mood, focus better, think deeper, inspire creativity, relax. So what makes Lucy unique? 100% pure tobacco-free nicotine. And you don't want that tobacco getting in the mix, right? You'll never find tobacco in any of our products ever. Lucy pouches are available in five strengths, two milligram to 12 milligram, 
12 different flavors cinnamon mint mango wintergreen pomegranate apple ice espresso i got and i got uh, twice i got a big bundle with all the different flavors yeah, too did. so for me personally i think that lucy is higher quality than any of the other pouches I've tried. They don't leave a dry mouth. The flavors are long lasting, has the perfect balance of nicotine and flavor. So whether you use nicotine to focus better, get a boost in energy or to chill out and relax, Lucy is made for your nicotine routine. If you want to try Lucy's tobacco free breakers, pouches or gum, go to lucy.co slash boyscast and use the promo code boyscast to get 20% off your first order. The gum is not to be sleeped on as well. No. Lucy offers free shipping and he's got a 30 day refund policy if you do change your mind. That's L-U-C-Y dot C-O and use the code boyscast to get 20% off and always free shipping. And of course here comes the fine print Lucy products are only for adults of legal age, and every order is age verified. This product contains nicotine, and nicotine is an addictive chemical. <laughs> well, I want to know an even better one. So while they're doing the marches, right? And um, the Clemson University students march on campus after tampons were quietly removed from the men's bathroom. Yeah. So right now they're having like a march beside this. Basically, <laughs> I think it was a little before, but they're having a march. When you zoom out, they're having a march right now about how they don't have enough tampons in the dude's bathroom. So you know it's all girls. I mean, but march, that's the right? same march as the pro Palestine march. They just merge them into one march. <laughs> but if they, do you think that if they yeah, are, yeah, what are you marching for? Palestine? You go, oh, we're marching for no in tampons the in the men's room. So <laughs> I think we just consolidate here and we'll just be both more powerful. I'm sure know. a lot of the Palestine guys are loving the tampons in the men's room. Dude, politics makes strange bedfellows as they say. <laughs> it does make, it does make my, very... My enemy of my enemy is my friend. It makes insanely <laughs> strange it bedfellows. Is, yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, dude. That's like, such dude, a good, look, true point. It is the most... Man, watching like right now like, you know, hardcore like right-wing conservatives and then just like fundamentalist Muslims come to get like you just see these like connections you're like this is bizarre it is bizarre <laughs> it's so bizarre but there's just like it's that, kind of it's like it's, it's kind of like if you really hate a girl and you and her ex-boyfriend start being buddies absolutely you go <laughs> fuck you go we don't I don't really like you but I fucking hate her so. yeah we have more in common than maybe we make a truce <laughs> yeah yeah you know? exactly one last job <laughs> but it's and it's all so temporary right like you just know that it's so temporary well it's like Martin Lawrence in the cop movie like they don't get along but uh, I think it was Martin Lawrence when he has got the white Irish cop partner white Irish cop partner Martin Lawrence I know him as bad boy uh, he did in bad boys but I think he had another cop movie oh, and probably. I'm pretty sure it was Martin and he had some white Irish cop Martin. and they were sort of an odd couple <clears throat> but uh, national security yeah I told you there was oh, one okay but the, the oh is that the guy from Shaun of the Dead yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah guy. there is that okay. guy yeah okay Clemson University students have failed uh, to have, have rallied to protest sanitary products being stripped from the male bathrooms on the South Carolina campus dressed in bright colors while clinging to signs uh, with messages saying hello it's the 21st century hello I mean there's no way that hello I'll, I'll tell you what will be the death anybody in there <laughs> it's 21st century hello <laughs> I'll tell you what the death. Knock knock. The death of mi of uh, tampons in men's rooms will be, and that is hustle culture. Gary V and hustle culture will nice. kill because there's no way that there isn't some ambitious. What are you goes, doing right now? There is money to be made. There is a box. There's of literally tampons. a box of free tampons. There's women who buy tampons. You literally just stand Drop outside of a C them. no stand outside of the CVS, being like, hey. Anybody want some tampons? Like half price if you're inside, and then you're just. Like, I got puns for days. Because, again, nobody can police that. Like, every restock is just, like, gone. They're all gone. Yeah, especially if you shove them up your ass. You don't need to now, shove them up your ass. You're a What woman if you prefer to shove them up your ass? That is a man. I mean, that's fine, too. But no way. There's no way that they could last. Like, you're stupid. If, if you're a co broke college kid and you walk into your men's room and there's just fucking pads and tampons everywhere, you're a sucker if you leave them. Do you think that there's any guys at the protest that are trying to get pussy? They go, hey, uh, she's there like, you know, free Palestine or whatever. And then the other guy, the girl's there. He goes, what, what are you protesting? And she goes, tampons. He goes, oh, me too, actually. He just <laughs> sort of <laughs> takes his yeah, pin yeah, off. Yeah, he goes, there's no tampons and Palestine. They need them really bad. Yeah, I do agree. Palestine needs some more tampons in the men's bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, how is college? You know, if you see your kid coming back, like, so how is college? Oh my God, huge protest. I spent the whole entire semester, I haven't been to class, but I spent the entire <laughs> semester. You will not believe what we achieved. We have a dispenser. It's like you're basically, you're basically taking a job, like fucking doing stuff that should be like meetings for, like the janitor meeting. Yeah. You're, you're kind of a, uh, it really is your 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 college experience is you've sort of uh, taken a position as like a janitorial intern. Yeah, you're just hijacking <laughs> the janitor meetings. <laughs> <laughs> You got to make sure they're always stocked, <laughs> and it's like again, it's like not to uh, like there is this thing called like the tyranny of the minority or whatever, which is like basically that like you know very small amount of people can get their way with stuff. But you're like, how many people? I, maybe I'm just this is me out of touch, but like on somewhere like Clemson campus, it, like how many female to male trans people are there? Female to male, not that many. Male to female. There's a lot, of, not, a lot of girls that are in betweens, but I think male to female. The female to male is like you're talking a handful. Not very on many. A college yeah. campus, like I don't know. If anything, just like individually, you're better. You're better off just individually sending all those people a uh, uh, lifetime, like, lifetime supply. supply. <laughs> like literally, you're like, we, here's a fucking storage locker. Here's the keys. <laughs> Help yourself exactly, yes. And you go like, put but, but friggin- we're not putting them in the men's. Room. Put in your male, re- your but male they don't get purse. To send, but they don't get to see yeah, your man purse, your <laughs> your fanny pack that you carry. But they You're don't right. get to send any message with that. They should they just don't. say like, listen, we're not doing ponds in the male bathroom. But if you need ponds, here's a lifetime supply of <laughs> <Yeah>. your trans male. <laughs> All the ponds you have. Yeah, literally, just like <laughs> we'll do an Amazon like <laughs> fucking recurring shipment to your house. Right, like, done and done on the house. Okay. <laughs> You have it's funny. You have to go to the janitor's closet and get them. <laughs> okay, so here's the. Okay, actually, I'm going to ask you one question. Yeah. Do you think that uh, as of now, it's looking like uh, that that Israel's going to go way too far with their retaliation, or do you think there's well, going to be we, some restraint? This is so. This is uh, Tuesday today. Yeah, and, and that's what we should mention. That we should by mention the way. that today's Tuesday that we're because I'm going on tour, so we had to go a little earlier. <laughs> Excuse me, and uh, good idea to mention that. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's yeah. a good Hopefully way to fucking. Some of this, let me hit some of this water but, here. But um, actually, Johnny, if you could grab one now, I was just saying you could have that in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is uh, fucking dro to go around, dude. Yeah, some dro. <laughs> we got some dro. Uh, some H two dro. But uh, yeah, well, there was the hospital just got bombed, and there was a hospital that just got bombed. And it, dude, this is such a like uh like this like two hours ago from when we we're recording. <clears throat> and then at first everybody's like they bombed the hospital Israel bombed the hospital I Israel I can tell you as somebody who spends a lot of time on Twitter and I think personally that it somewhat does matter um, yeah, yeah thank you Johnny Johnny Glover everybody um, as it's so, as like that it does matter winning the information war and like the war of just like you know what people think like the consensus like I'm like I don't see them just bombing a hospital like without any warning either like people would be like well is, it's not even okay to bomb with warning but like no warning crazy and then like you know maybe an hour right before we started recording it came out and like basically now that everybody's saying that the hamas basically fired a rocket it misfired hit the hospital and it was just basically a faulty rocket or some shit but again like even if they have and apparently there's like news there was like news footage of them just like you know film because there's like all these channels like if you go on uh like all these like social media and stuff like t- twitch or whatever like youtube there's be like live like uh security cameras or like cctv cameras of just the gaza strip or whatever so apparently there was one video of just like you could see it happening but then everybody's like well that's fake like the the, the information war is crazy because like people are just like well that's fake and then like you know the idf comes out and being like well we didn't do it and everybody's like well you don't trust the idf and then you're like well and then but so you trust hamas i, I don't know it's it's, yeah. it's it's a crazy one i it's uh i'll tell you one thing that i was maybe if i was to say the one thing that i but israel has to be very careful to not lose one it's like look you're, you're talking about there's 16 million jews in the world there's 1.8 million muslims it's like it's not even close it's dude. not even a close it's not even close like if if like again i don't and assuming america does not intervene like and i'm I'm hoping they do not and sometimes it might be less when they're (laughs) shape-shifting do you think there's what do you think about this though you know there's so many trans people in the military how about uh we we reach some sort of like just uh you know not not a consensus but a compromise here where if america does have to deploy soldiers to the middle east it's just the trans ones (laughs) do you think people would maybe be on board with that (laughs) they might be 
the fir- the first trans brigade or whatever. Well, that's sort of like you know how they accuse Israel of putting like uh, pigs on, uh, pigs on the bullets. Yeah, that was fake. That's their I know, but that I, oh, I actually didn't know whether it was. Or was I just said it's always they've always said that. I'm yeah, not yeah, just yeah, even saying sure. right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's their like insult to injury is well, America's uh, making them be killed by a trans. I think person. in yeah in a, yeah yeah in a, yeah with a pig bullets. <laughs> Dude, imagine getting killed by a trans person with a pig bullet. Imagine just dipping the bullets into and your And then mom. you have, you do, <laughs> the, the twist there is you do have 72 virgins waiting for you, but they're all pre-op trans. <laughs> <laughs> you go, no, you go, he's had sex before, but this... <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Allah, excuse me. The virgin because the pussy's fresh. <laughs> or post, even post-op, you go, Ooh. I've considered a virgin again. Yeah, but Americans did do that during, uh, like, you know, the Holy Afghan shit. war and Iraq war. They were doing the pig thing. I actually was thinking, man, the, well, that would be one of the funniest things is when you saw, like, you know, Times Square, there was, like, the big protest. There was, like, the Israel side and then the Palestine side, and they were all just yelling at each other. I was like, how funny would it be if someone just fucking just crop dusted them with just raw bacon, both sides? <laughs> <laughs> just both of them. Just get it. Just, just like... Just getting hit with bacon in the face. That'd be a good prank for a a clown, a clown to come through and do. Good, no, 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 no. I'm thinking more like a commercial, like, like you know, like one of those crop dusters that puts out forest fires or whatever. Yeah, like all all Jamie Kennedy's kind of, you know. And then they on the battlefield is the last place that you'd expect (laughs) to find some pork. And then maybe they would be like, you know what? Maybe we're all not so different. We all hate getting. Just oh, can you believe this? And then yeah, the it's sort of like when they do the food fight and hook, and they all just realize yeah, that right? their bodies, you know, and they start doing the pig food fight and be like, "You motherfucker!" And then they and then now they just do that. They should do that for all. Hey, of you're Israel. not so fucking bad. You're not so fucking bad, brother. Exactly. They just do that for Israel. They just fucking just dump fucking all bacon uh-huh. all over the country. Well, I'll say that the the most thing that not the maybe I did I, I realized, but maybe uh, this week I kind of re- didn't realize the extent to which. Um, the one of the biggest problems in those places is it's just like so hard to get a society running when you can't put in like when no you can't get foreign investment. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah maybe I just didn't realize the extent to which that I, I thought I knew that was like one of the pieces, but I didn't realize the extent to which that was like such a huge piece. Because it's like, how can you ever build when you know there's no real property rights and there's no real, um, yeah. I mean, no, I, why would anyone invest money in? There I mean, I think like there are a, property rights. I just think like I can't imagine well, then you, enforcing them. Properly. I can't. Well, I can't imagine you can get insurance. I don't think there's insurance. I would guess. But that's what I mean, though. So why would anyone like build them all there? Yeah, like, they wouldn't. I mean, it's funny. Well, <clears throat> or not funny, but there's like there are resorts in the Gaza Strip. I didn't know this. Like, because really? well, everybody's like, it's you know, it's a open air prison, and I'm like, well, open air prisons don't have resorts, mm-hmm. but like there are like for them, I guess, luxury resorts on the Gaza Strip, and you can still book them. Yeah, I don't think you could go to them, but <laughs> you could like you can go on Booking dot com and just like book, really book a night at a luxury Gaza Strip resort. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna avoid doing that as well. But <laughs> so, I mean, you know what? People will start doing that as like the support. Them. Remember, like when people were booking Airbnbs in Ukraine, but not just going? To support. Yeah. Okay, so on the topic, so on the thing, this is kind of the final thing of the college kid conversation because basically they had a truck and the truck was driving around um, and basically showing the names of the students who were blaming Israel for Hamas attacks. Like, yes, basically. They just signed the things. They were like, hey, sign the thing, and then they signed the thing. Yeah. I'm sure some of them are all about it, some of them aren't, but yeah. Some of them don't want to rock the boat. Some of them are playing. Megan Kelly and Candace Owens are having a, you know, yeah, some of them it's just like, yeah, this is where their ideology leads. This this is where their ideology leads. Some of them do believe it. Some of them are like, I don't know, I probably just to be accepted amongst these. It's the same as the Amy Schumer thing where she's just like, their mind is blown, where you're just like, that you were on their side when they were like literally saying white professors were banned from campus. You go, yeah, th- this is kind of where it leads or whatever. But um, the interesting part was it, it's what you said before, where it sort of made this little conversation where everyone's yelling at each other, like Candace Owens and uh, uh, Megan Kelly, who both uh, fan of the sketches. Yeah, 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 yeah they are. <laughs> but they're having a bit of a cat fight. <laughs> <laughs> and but the thing is, so Megan Kelly's side is just like 
these people should all uh, have their names on a list. And some of these like high people in high companies are kind of saying, we're making a list of these people's yeah, names Ackman and I never want to hire Ackman them. Bill Ackman was trying to get that going. Bill Ackman, the famous investor. Bill Ackman was trying to get it going that there should never... And then the other side of it is kind of like the, you know, uh, oh, I'm going to take a principle. I've never been against cancel culture. A lot of these people are just young people doing stupid things or whatever, The which is probably the actual truth. But the other side that probably is... The reality is more just like, yeah... Then the other argument would go, well, it's not going to stop unless they are, have held accountable for their actions. I mean, then, there is a there is a like biological kind of like like urge, you know, like some kind of carnal urge for like eye for an eye, shit, mm -hmm. you know, where you go like I kind of. I think that's but that the problem is that's the part no one will say, so they have to be like, well, this is they have to justify yeah, they like want this revenge. Is, they, on these you just people. admit that, yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, you go like, look, you're, you've been they've been all these people were so probably, they're having a fake argument is my point. Yeah. yeah They've been canceling people, and now people want to just get their revenge on them. Yeah, sorry. And, and sometimes that is a good lesson for those people. I You're guess. sort of saying it better than I was, because my point was it was just like the side. It's like, listen, conservatives are no stranger to loving getting whipped up into a frenzy. Like they, it's almost like they've been jealous of liberals for the last of the while. Look at them watching them get mad at everything. Because yeah. I think that people, there is something that people just like <clears throat> inherently like about being. Indignant about something It's Absolutely. like their favorite thing You know what I mean Especially when they're Taking the moral high ground of it People When they're on the right side of it like People when like on it. offense And for set of defense Nobody likes being on defense It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice perch to be on I think that there's Absolutely. something About the human condition That they like they, People really feel good A majority of people Are probably wired like that Where there's nothing That gets them fucking Rock or hard Than getting to be like of course of course but yeah i don't know i i i the the conservative is just weird because and obviously i guess not all some of them are being principled but like they were the original cancel culture people and then they had their time away from it and some of them gravitate back and i mean i guess just like they're not all mono it's not a monolith where but this is where i would say it was like again whatever if you want to be a commentator and political actor it's like you know whatever whatever right but as a normal person it was like there's absolutely no benefit in you being hyped up and joining mobs on the internet. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hell no. Hell no. Yeah. Like as a, you know, uh, the principled part of me obviously is like, yeah, don't, well, I'm not in favor of cancel culture cultural no, but, regardless. Well, we, I don't think we have that conversation. You more just have a conversation. What's the actual truth? Like the same reason if you go, if someone said like, oh, this guy's super racist or whatever, blah, blah. Like, yeah, obviously there's part of it where you're just like, well, yeah, I'm against people losing their job period. But more so I'd just be like, he's not. Yeah. Like I know sure. him. So the case is you go, you go, the truth is if I was looking to hire someone, yeah, there are people that are like super all about all this stuff and I wouldn't hire them because they're going to be a hassle. And there's super certain people where they go, this is why I say if, if you hired someone you go, yeah, I was in the thing in college. I don't really care. I'm not like a... If you were super pro-Israel, that's your whole thing, and you're, should I hire that guy who did this? Well, it depends. Who's the guy? Well, What's the thing? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I think we have to go back to a kind of older time, too, when you just like... You did discrimination, but it was just a private thing that you did. <laughs> well, right? that's why I said you used to have to discriminate based on the job. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like like many people were you used to, have to say you just but say you know, those bankers, but, right? But you know what I mean. Like it would it would be the kind of thing where someone's like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't get that job because I was black," and they're like, "Did they tell you that?" And you're like, "No." And then you're like, "But it might have been that, mm -hmm. but they never knew." And then now we we got into this like phase of society where we were like openly being like, "We're not giving you this because of this." We are openly. It's like we need Hollywood. to go back to just like, "Hey, you know what? If you care so." much about this kind of shit as an employer and you look someone up and they were doing this thing and you saw them because you're doing your due diligence and hiring them then you'd be like you just don't call them back yeah like you just don't well, hire so you've them. been in a meeting maybe it hasn't happened to you the same way but i've been in a meetings where they go oh and what are you doing for shabbat and i go oh, i don't celebrate that and they go okay uh, <laughs> oh, <weird. laughs> Anyways, uh, oh look at our, the time our 415's kind of early yeah so <laughs> that was good good powwow <laughs> Um, <laughs> a great wow! Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, <laughs> we're excited to. Uh, hey, you go. Nice to meet you. And you go to shake hand. You go trick question. Uh, just checking if you shake hands. <laughs> you with a woman? <laughs> okay, problematic. <laughs> just making sure that you're right. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. You just go back to just private discrimination. <laughs> I guess that's the American oh. way. Yeah, that's that's yeah. There is having like a big conversation, which is sort of like, I mean, probably Candace Owens is like her. What she's saying makes more sense than Megyn Kelly. She's I mean, it's sort of more reasonable. Yeah, it's principle. But the, that's what's actually going on is people all discriminate always. But like, look, it's like, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure there are people who will look like look those people up and they won't care that they were involved with this thing in five years from now and will be the other half yeah and there will be some people who are just like yeah i don't want to hire people who are like you know in the streets like fucking celebrating when like people you can tell yeah you tell in two seconds if some are you gonna be are you gonna be trying to start all these organizations that take down my company yeah (laughs) Sure. What have you been up to lately? You know what I mean. Absolutely, it's it's really it's yeah. There's are is your whole deal trying to create fucking dissent in my organization because yeah, that's gonna yeah. be a no good. I mean, this whole thing I think will be a, a bit of a course correcting mechanism for a lot of things. You think so? I think a bit. Yeah, we'll see. I guess I don't know. I think there's a, a lot of like Jews who got a little too liberal. Who are the chickens are coming home to roost for them right now? Mm-hmm. And they go, yeah, it's a little too liberal. You know, you said you uh, you said to watch that like Jared Kushner thing. Yeah, yeah I'm I watched either. like a little bit of it. Yeah, I, th- I like them. He sounds exactly like he was the most guy that was. He like, sounds a lot and of hate looks like a young Super Dave Osborne. Honestly, go <laughs> watch it and listen to him. He has like the kind of gravel. He sounds exactly like him. It's kind of weird. He did seem like he knew what he was talking about, but I think that I, I think I was trying to read it. I was trying to watch it be like, why was people so like hated on him? And I guess the thing is, he sort of really didn't know what he talking about, but he does throw around. He was like, yeah, it's like 25 billion here. And that was the best deal we ever spent. Like, yeah, yeah. I think he just throws around well, it was TDS how much money was, he spent. It was TDS and no, no, the, ne- the nepotism thing was the No, no, thing. I was saying the other way. Oh, I'm talking about the, <laughs> it's complicated now. Now, I'm talking about the people that hated him from the other way. Oh, gotcha. I mean, like, this guy's Israel's puphead or whatever. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. Because he does throw around big numbers. it will be like, yeah, and then obviously he does know what he's talking about, but he throws around, like, you know, and then obviously we'll throw a quick $125 billion at that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's free and loose with these pretty big numbers yeah, that he's is. throwing around, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the one thing he said that uh, I thought was really interesting was he was, uh, he was, um, he basically says, uh, only in Washington can you fail at something for 10 years and then become like a million dollar a pop expert. And be an expert, yeah. yeah I thought that was a good point. You're like, yeah, you're an expert. And you're like, you have to, like in the private sector, if you fail for 10 weeks, you get fired. But there's so many industries like that. You know what I mean? There's so many people that have never done the thing that are an expert. Yeah. Uh, so just speaking of universities, another thing. So the degree, of, just to show where they're at in general, <laughs> the degree of magic is going to be offered at the University of Exeter. Yeah. I mean, guys, these are just a, this is just a business. Like at the end of the day, we need five hundred uh, fucking grand to get a degree in magic, <laughs> and it doesn't stop at magic. It's worse. I than mean, magic. it makes your money disappear. It is fucking. <laughs> they're doing something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first, <laughs> everyone put their tuition in this hat. <laughs> Poof! That's wire. your first lesson. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> was our buddy had a really good joke? Um, who was it in Toronto? Indian dude, K- Kunal, what? Aurora. No, he's not in Toronto. No, he's here. No, okay, no, it wasn't his joke. It was our buddy of ours they're in all Toronto they're that they're I forget? But he says that uh, the only he goes the uh, the only thing I'm doing a G hat on is my parents' dreams. <laughs> oh, uh, Faisal. Faisal. Faisal Bot. Bot. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Faisal Bot's great. He's a man. Shadow Faisal. That's who it was. Yeah. But um, the magic thing, yeah. Essentially, they yeah you're they're doing a. Um, they're doing a disappearing act on your chance of having a <laughs> successful career. Yeah. Chance of I making mean, your I, parents I, proud. I mean, at that point, you're just holding your we're gonna parents make, hostage. We're making your parents' pride disappear. That's so weird. You're like, what do you need a degree in magic? You just got to go f- trick a bunch of people, and then you're like, I don't know. Like, magic, you just uh, sit at home being like, making coins disappear and shit. But it's not that. So here, listen to what it is. It gets fucking wacky. The innovative MA in magic, MA in magic, the occult science has been following recent surge in magic, blah, 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 blah. And witchcraft. Uh, and magic around the world so they're kind of tying into the world it, it gets deeper Emily Solve, female of course girls aren't even as good at magic yeah. a recent surgeon there's not one girl in magic said. and the occult inside and outside of academia lies in the heart of the most urgent questions of our society decolonization oh fuck off <laughs> he didn't know it was going there 
<laughs> All right. Every, you know, here's the best part, Danny. The guy being like, ready to decolonize our mind. One guy's sitting there with his deck of cards. <laughs> 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 Am I in the right place here? Um, Some fat bitch shows up. Refunds or... Ah. Some fat chick starts showing up and telling you about decolonization. You, you got your like squirt. You got your flower that squirts on. <laughs> That's clowning, Ryan. <laughs> all right, sorry for all the magicians. You're holding your magic wand. <laughs> it's just like a bunch of nerdy dudes with like the hats on in the suit. <laughs> oh. now we're gonna decolonize your mind. We're gonna decolonize that rabbit. See, we're gonna start with rabbits or two live the white man. <laughs> and you go, yeah. ah. That's by the way, the decolonization talk. We're gonna make this white woman disappear and we're not gonna let her come back. <laughs> That's what I was talking about with the lack of self preservation that people have is when you're in America or Canada talking about decolonization and love it and you go, How do you think this plays out in a fucking perfect scenario here? No, well, they get their way, obviously. No, like, but I'm saying, like, if you truly, no, you're right like, that, you go, yeah. you, then you're dead. I agree, yeah. You're like, you're literally, you, like, if this, if you run this speed run, this whole thing, you're like, you're dead. A lot of people don't. I, yeah, I agree with the self-preservation thing a bit, but I, I guess the other way, the the problem is, I think you're, maybe where I'm disagreeing is I'm saying their self-preservation lies in their allegiance to what they yeah, consider well, they the right look, opinions with their friend group. For sure. So I, that's their yeah. self-preservation yeah. aspect. And that's more just... I'm, I'm talking their biologically. Inab their like. inability to take their opinions to their logical conclusions. Yeah, yeah. And they and there may be like, well, this would never happen in my lifetime, so it doesn't matter, or like kind of thing. Like, there could be like, this could take so long. But you're like, imagine if we could snap a finger and... Get. I mean, you see a lot of people online being like, oh, then I would if I was to have to give my house and they'd come back and then I hear about hit the so then do it. Well, what's stopping yeah, you? Yeah, what's stopping you now? You don't. Like, have, it doesn't have to be official, dude. The fucking decolonization talk is like some of just the stupidest shit. And you're like, <laughs> look, you got colonized. That's just where we're at. It's like it's just like what's where we're at. It's like we live in a. I mean, you're legitimately the girl that date uh, the guy that dated the girl seven times before and showing up at the house, and you're like, we're married. It's <laughs> she's married, bro. Yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> Let it go. And then she goes, no, I was her first. It's over. And then there's some, you know, there's like some college kids outside of your house being like, this is Tim's pussy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're like, shit's over. You go, it's done. We're married. We're, not, we're not going back on this. <laughs> there's no redos on colonization. Like, it's over. Like, if anything, we're like, we've kind of stopped. So that's good. Doesn't seem like we're, there's really much colonization happening further anymore. But like for the most part, you're like we're done with it. China is fucking trying his hand in a little bit of it. I think. I, mean, with I guess Russia is like I don't know trying to take territory. But for the most part, it's done. We're done yeah. with this. So the the board the map's set. I don't think we're having new maps. The risk board is getting fucking turned <laughs> up right now, though, man. I, honestly, it reminds me of when Newman and Kramer were playing and they took the <laughs> board onto the street. That's it's th there's yeah. it's risky and shaky in that right now. fucking scene. The Ukraine was weak. <laughs> Was, Ukraine was very weak. <laughs> Risk board's getting fucking shaken up right now, dude. <laughs> so decolonization, I'm loving the idea. I guess maybe I'm I, the one guy that took this course because he thought it was actual yeah, magic. I guess maybe Taiwan. That's the one thing. Maybe Taiwan will. Decolonization, the exploration of alternative epistemologies, feminism, anti-racism are at the core of this program. Ugh. You go, the one guy goes... When do we get our wands? <laughs> <laughs> um, excuse me. Me <laughs> wand. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We have them here in uh, fucking Hitachi. You go, here you go. <laughs> he makes people. He makes people's <laughs> quarters disappear with reparations. <laughs> Just, what am I meant to do with this Hitachi wand? To go? Uh, if you jam it far enough up your ass, there's some sort of G spot sitting there. Going, <laughs> you know? Uh oh. I mean, men don't normally sign up for this class, but they <laughs> <laughs> call it your rectum with this one. <laughs> Okay, first and foremost, decolonization is bad, but colonization is good when we decolonize your ass with dildos. <laughs> <laughs> With, we colonize your ass with Hamas branded male Sibians. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see all the fucking people who are like, all right, everybody. In like fl waving ISIS flags? Is this seeing that shit? A lot of the pro Palestine rallies is like people are showing up. But there was one in Mississauga, and there was one in a few places where people are showing up with ISIS flags. Oh, I know. I said, and girls then it's, were mad. She goes, "You live in Mississauga. Yeah. Stop this." <laughs> 
<laughs> and then it is funny because it's very much similar to like the trucker rally where like you know totally. the, the one Nazi guy. It's their similar problem where they're uh-huh. like, like get out of here. <laughs> the ISIS they're like we're guys. doing a real thing, and the fucking ISIS guys <laughs> and like a brand new like F one fifty show up. And you're like get out of here. <laughs> it fucking is over. <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> It's like, where'd you get an ISIS flag anyways? (laughs) Walmart. (laughs) (laughs) So it's decolonization, feminism. The course will be offered in the Institute of Arab and Islamic Studies. And it will allow people to re-examine the assumption that the West is a place of rationalism and science, while the rest of the world is a place of magic and superstition. Okay. I guess you could say anyone that's uh, all the ones that are super religious. You could, I mean, I guess it just depends on which one you believe and which one you don't believe. But well, we might find out which one. The so right it's one not is what you think, though. It's not. You, you come home and you go, my son's being a magician. Magician. It's like actually worse. He's, like, <laughs> he's coming home and he's going to give you a lecture on feminism. <laughs> The university said the course could prepare students for careers in teaching. <laughs> well, that's yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. the only thing, job you're going to get. I don't know if there's teaching more teaching someone else this bullshit. Yeah, I don't know if there's. That's like literally. There's no more red flag for any college course than teaching. They go, right hey, now. we're running a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> <laughs> you find five other students. <laughs> <laughs> like literally they go hey so this is a ponzi scheme the only thing you can do with this is just teach it to other people you go that's a ponzi scheme that's a literal ponzi scheme i guess pe- maybe a pyramid scheme or whatever we know. teach you feminism magician decolonizing and then, and then you, you find five other people and then the tuition falls up <laughs> <laughs> it's a pyramid scheme. The tuition funnels up to the top. <laughs> There's like so many courses like that, though. Like, how many <laughs> other like sociology bullshit? Where, you know, the only thing you can do here is just teach other people this. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> All right. We have a uh, <sighs> we have uh, we have a special guest today, Penn and Teller. <laughs> Samantha, uh, feminist author Samantha <laughs> Penn, <laughs> and bank teller, <laughs> <laughs> and bank teller, and I got Brenda bad news Smith. Yeah, yeah, bank teller Brenda Smith. I got bad news for you. Brenda ain't keeping quiet today. <laughs> <laughs> she got a lot of opinions, Brenda. And you're gonna be hearing them all. <laughs> so, so Ben and Della are coming today. Ben and Della are on the stage right now. <laughs> Samantha Ben, <laughs> you might recognize her for for working fourth wave feminism. <laughs> feminism in the Arab world. <laughs> Uh, it's such a such a pyramid scheme. Oh, good lord! The the university said the course could prepare students for teaching, counseling, mentoring. Oh, there's a job. That's a job. You can be a mentor. Be a mentor. <laughs> like an assistant teacher. Museum work. You can be a receptionist at the museum. Work in libraries. Tourism. Do you really need to be a? This is a bad. Have a university a bad degree course to, to work in a, a library. Uh, no, I think to be like the a librarian. Library, some of the top librarians is yeah, yeah, a real no, job. Librarian is a real job, but I was saying a receptionist at a museum. I don't think so. I don't think that's like a retiree's job. You can be a tour guide, though. You could be like, this is the first ever wand that decolonized the, yeah, but you the could, mind. Of, this, is the, this is the actual wand that, de- that decolonized <laughs> the mind of Brenda Teller. <laughs> All right. The choice of modules includes dragons in Western literature and art, the legend of King Arthur, paleontology, Islamic thought, archaeology. Well, the bottom line is this is a bullshit. Yeah. Okay, and then there's one more thing. Scam. A lot's going on. Scam likely. We're kind of going long, but we have a lot to get through, too. But the other thing was this HR professional calls out how dystopian it feels to have to go to our jobs amid tragedy. And they've got a new term and they said we need catastrophe leave. Yeah. And so this basically it's like an HR person that's, you know, got a LinkedIn and TikTok and the whole deal and just their whole, you know, they went to one of these programs yeah, yeah, on how to course. decolonize a business. You know what I mean? So they've got all these wacky ideas. But the, the funny part is if you want to talk about taking the logical extremes, if you go, if you give these type of people catastrophe assurance, it's like, well, they ain't ever coming to no. work because everything's a catastrophe. You go, work today after they just got rid of maternity leave <laughs> in Arkansas. I just like that. What the, isn't a catastrophe? Well, with the, these the, even, even the list of ones that they did use where they're just like, you know, 9 11, uh, the great financial crisis. Well, they're saying, yeah, they're like, like imagine argument. you're just like, There's hey. an argument for like an American tragedy that millions of people killed that, yeah, that maybe, I mean, even if you do go to work, it's probably going to be a lighter day. I mean, 
mean, I, I'll tell you, like people that work in our industry, like the you know few days after this happened, it was you know you kind of w- w- wasn't the time to make that sales call. Yeah, you know whatever. What I mean? But yeah, yeah, I guess. But like just the idea, you're like the global financial crisis is one. You're like, hey, I can't come into work today. Uh, there's a global there's financial a global crisis. financial crisis. Like you, you work in a <laughs> bank. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you have clients. Yeah, you're like you work at a bank. They need you right now more than ever. And you go. It's a global financial crisis, though. There was okay. a big terrorist attack on New York City. I'm not going to come in. Where do you work? The hospital. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Catastrophe. You leave. The, the main problem is like again, there isn't the. Cr- it's not the craziest thing. Like if it's a big enough thing, you know. But the problem is everything is a catastrophe for oh, these people. Yeah. yeah. Of so she's an HR professional. This is the Jared Korshner type of professional. I think organizations need to start using some kind of catastrophe leave or something uh, because this is not normal to see something horrific and then be expected. Like, they would want a month and a half after January 6th, for yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, January 6th would be a big one. <laughs> like, this, every company would be shut down always. Yeah, for sure. You just, you're like, no. Um, and then... Uh, because it's not normal to see something so horrific and then be expected to lead a meeting about marketing. Nobody cares about marketing right now. I mean, the shareholders probably do. It's also another thing. It's also just goes back where what level, what size company do you need to get to where you need an HR person? I know there's laws about it too. Is there? Yeah. Like you be there would obviously probably be some like I think it's incentive. 100 employees. There would be like, like some a lot of weird incentive to just keep it at like What do you mean? You don't know that? There's a million reasons for that. What? Well, the, after a certain amount of like full-time employees you need to pay the like you know No, but I have a million things. Yeah, you have yeah to I do. guess or, or, or no, I'm talking specifically how I think like it's a, uh, there's HR tiers, trouble, right? It's like 100 100 is a big tier, 500 is a big tier, 10 is a tier for some stuff. So then you just keep it at 99 you'd be like just Yeah, that's what people do. Yeah. Well, that's why they have and then no, a lot of times people keep it at 99 and have a lot of like um uh like off the contract uh, yeah workers. contractor yeah, yeah interesting i mean that is a huge i mean that's the argument that's always going back and forth it's like you can make these regulations all it does is prevent growth and blah blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. i don't know you know they've, they've been having those conversations forever yeah, i don't know right? i don't know if there's like a legal requirement or if there's just like once you get to a certain size you just kind of need also to, there's like minimum wages only apply, uh, apply to certain sizes right there's different there's, yeah, yeah, there's just a million different laws for different things right mm-hmm. <clears throat> but i think a lot of times these people <clears throat> They went to school for sort of decolonization or whatever. They kind of, they're, they don't, the same way you're saying they don't take it, they can't take their things to their logical extreme. They're not really able to see the full picture. It's kind of, it's like with your dad, right? It's like a lot of times it's just, they see their, you know, company is just like their dad. It's like, well, why can't I have more money? He's like, oh, you don't have any more money. He's like, we'll get it. Yeah. I so it's like, right. there isn't really a should or shouldn't. As you're like, well, if the, for some companies, you're like, we'll just go on, you know, we'll just be on, be on leave six months a year and be like, okay, well, what if we don't have enough money to pay pe- people? And like, we'll get enough money. Yeah, we'll get it. For, that's not really, uh, you're, I'm in HR, so that's not really, yeah, that's not really my problem. We'll I'm in the out. money making division of this company yeah, yeah. So, well maybe you should work harder at making more money and you're like well you keep telling me that everyone has to take a fucking half the <laughs> year off and, and they do <laughs> yeah so it's, it's just these weird you're sort of like it, it's it's no there isn't like a right or wrong it was like you could there might be an individual case where you go hey this company's like working people to the bone and it was like the i don't know if today was the day to like work people to the bone after something crazy but on yeah. a on a broader scale you're just like it's a situation dependent that's true you're like what if this company's on the brink of going under you're like well everyone's taking a week off yeah, like, everybody uh depends pull on, on what's roll up their sleeves and you're like uh no yeah it is clinically pro- here, but it gets better than that. That was the first part, but it gets better than that because they just come up with the new terms. These guys, these guys have the HR guys have a lot of time on their hands to come up yeah, with stuff. Do. But then there's another new term alert: vicarious traumatization. It is clinically proven that witnessing events secondarily or online in news is equally as traumatizing. Oh God, stay off of Twitter then. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, that, that's the thing. Be like, I also I've been witnessing them vicariously. They like, stop witnessing them. We go. That's not going to be an option. Yeah, that's not going to be an option. How could you just? turn a blind eye to such atrocities <laughs> okay well, so, so. when johnny tried to take the day off because he said they, <laughs> the tampon thing <laughs> he goes you didn't hear they got two fucking rated male tampons at nyu <laughs> he barely wanted to take a day off when he got hit by a fucking car and <laughs> yeah. send it a spin cycle <laughs> i go how much time do you need for the tampon thing it was a couple months to do it <laughs> It's clinically proven that witnessing events, uh, it's not just your imagination. It's not because we've gone soft in recent years. <laughs> he wants to clear that yeah, up. He goes, we're not soft. <laughs> Nothing to do to with make that. that. <laughs> I want to make that crystal fucking clear, pal. In recent years, studies have repeatedly shown that exposure to the horrors that regularly 
blanket, not just our news programming, but our society feeds is actually traumatizing. I mean, I sort of agree with this to some degree that it is probably true that people's brains are getting fried from... I mean, I just did a video that, like, it's probably not good for you to just watch, like, videos of dead babies all day long. Fuck no. You know what I mean? No. Like, agree, but um, probably the, the answer to that is, like... They're not even willing to have a conversation of whether they should stop doing it because you'd be because the, the problem is their opinion is like everyone should be involved. You should be tweeting nonstop. You should do all this, and it's going to mess up your brain, and that's your boss's problem. As opposed <laughs> to just being like, and probably also we should maybe not do that as much. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's just like number one's so much advice to everyone is like, we, how many people do we have we known over the years that are like mental wrecks and they argue on Facebook every day and you're just like, until you're willing to stop that, there's no, there's no helping you. Of course. Yeah. You got to try. I mean, you got to turn off the, turn off the screen. You're a fucking Unplug. Men- yeah. And you, <clears throat> some people can handle advice it. for August Ames. Some people play the game. Like, you know, I've even noticed like younger generations have, are more equipped for it in the sense that like, do you know, even like the Sneakos of the world? Yeah. Like, those guys play internet like more of a game. Like, they sort of see... They almost... I don't know if they would describe it like this, but it, to me, I've just, just noticed a little difference between the younger version. They almost play uh, like they're a character in a reality show. Yeah. It's like they sort of... A lot of these guys sort of, like, know I'm <clears throat> playing, like, like, the situation and my life's just that. Uh-huh. So, in, the, in their relationships, and they're sort of, they sort of know that they're... You know, people are going to hate them, and they're playing that role. I think better than people from our generation, sure, where it's like... Sure. Yeah, or yeah, no, yeah. definitely better than people the generation above us who didn't yeah, even grow yeah, up with 100%. it. But, so it's... I think it, it does also uh, age to specific because some people have like sort of internalized the full picture a little better. I yeah, think that's us being internet guys have sort of uh, probably somewhere in between, but yeah. Yeah, I think so. But yes, I mean, if you grew up with nothing but this, then... But scientists and mental health professionals call this vicarious traumatization, and it means our brains quite literally cannot differentiate between a violent image we see on a screen and ones we see firsthand. So I don't know about that. Were you saying you it's equally as bad? Yeah, that's not equally as bad. I can, I mean, I could see 40 dead babies. For well, someone's like wife was person. just killed. You know, someone, you know, someone just watched like a whole bunch of people get massacred. They were in the, you know, they were in the school that the shooting happened and you go, yeah, well, we're in the exact yeah, same, same scenario. same thing, because I watched Me the, and David Hogg experienced yeah, the exact I, same thing. I watched the live stream on Facebook, so. Man, it's, like and uh, have you heard yeah. of vicarious traumatization? <laughs> As a you know, as a trauma victim, and you go, well, "What was your trauma?" You go, I, "Well, I was in Sandy Hook. I was in." The, you go, <laughs> was in what home. do you mean you were in them? You go, "I watched them." And you go on the news. I watched the documentary about them. Basically, the same. Like, the stats are in. <sighs> Mental. That's gonna happen really soon, where there's gonna be TikTok channels of girls that have vicarious traumatization. Oh, for sure. Especially if they can start getting something for it. Oof. Woo! Vicarious traumatization is going to pick up, man. Yeah. We're still a 2013 study found that in some cases it's actually more traumatizing to witness a traumatic event secondhand <laughs> than it is to actually experience it in yourself. Okay. <laughs> so I think now we're pushing it. Yeah, that's in fucking that's mental. That's the stupidest thing. It's one of the dumber. But so this guy is basically saying you. And someone that's like, anything for someone time that lives work, in the though. Gaza Strip, you're basically you go. It's actually worse for you. But again, if you think of it from like the perspective of you're like, yeah, someone who's trying to just get out of work. <laughs> yeah, you have to think of it. And you go, yeah, yeah you do have to think of it like that. that was you like go, my joke you're missing with, a key factor that, here. That was my joke with the Global Day of Jihad, where I'm like, I'm not putting it past like it's just like some fucking little Jewish boy who just knew that if he started this Global Day of Jihad rumor, he'd get out of school the next day. I know. You know, he's doing a jihad on that <laughs> break room <laughs> <laughs> on this fucking Xbox. <laughs> I <wanna> tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's doing a jihad on his manager's scheduling. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're going to go over to the Patreon. We have a whole bunch of stuff over there. We got a, some new joiners this week, so we're cooking. Patreon.com slash the boys cast. New on episode over. every week. Support the boys, support the Patreon. And the podcast. If you like it, tell a friend is another thing that yeah. a lot of people do. That's the tell most important thing you could do. Yeah. If you don't have any money, go tell one of your friends. If you don't have any money, which That's is fine. fine. Totally fine. We don't tell need a your body. Money. Tell a friend. Tell a body, a pal, an amigo. Yes, sir. Peace. Later.